Hello, please switch chat. Hello, it is I, your not so favorite, not so safe to the anime cat girl. And today we are continuing when the night comes. So I did some research on this game, and it turns out, yes, there is a polyamorous relationship route for Alcar, who we're trying to romance, but it's with Omen, the sweet little demon boy. So we're gonna go for that route. It's a very good thing I saved that point. Because otherwise we would probably have to like start over like most of the game just to get to that. And I know I said that we were just going to be doing Alcar. But to be fair, I need po more polyamorous rep. And I like Omen too. So yes. And we're going to start at the one message for... Uh, let's see. Right here. I think this one uh, is the one that we need for uh, Omen. To get him to love us. So let's, just, so let's do it. Uh, oh yeah, we were at... He was uh, talking about a book. That uh, he was writing or something like that. Like a log. Is there anything about me? You said you write about things that you find interesting. That's right. Anything that intrigues me, I guess. Sometimes things I don't understand so I can ask someone later. Human things, mostly. I smile, enamored. He's so wonderfully curious. It's a nice break from the doom and gloom that the others have spoken to have been a man em em emanating. Emanating. I can't fucking read. Is there anything about me in there? He stutters, holding the book a little tighter. Oh, maybe. Ooh, he's writing about me. I see that little blush of yours. I raise an eyebrow at him, and he shyly drops his gaze. Uh, yes. Yes, there is. Oh. My smile grows exponentially, and Omen smiles in return. The color in his cheeks is almost matching his shirt. What'd you write about me? I just noticed. I think his tail is, like, pierced. There's, like, looks like there's, like, studs there. That's cool. His tail sways back and forth enthusiastically, curling around his leg. You're really putting me on the spot, huh? Yes, because I want to romance you in Alcar. As long as it's nice, I don't mind. Uh... I offer him a wink. Oh, it's very nice. Trust me. Oh, God. He's gonna, like, write about my tits and ass, isn't he? I saw dramatically, watching him watch me. I have a feeling there will be more notes in this book this evening. Well, I guess I'll have to trust you if they're not going to show me. Never say never, Yui. I feel a sudden twang of pain in my temple again. The sensation is unpleasant and it burns. Yui, are you okay? Omen rushes to my side, the notebook forgotten upon the counter. He reaches for me, but he's hesitant. I can feel an impossible warmth radiating off his palm, but he withdraws his hand before he touches me. I'm fine. I just... I really need to find Ezra. Do you have any idea where he could be? No, I don't know for sure, but he usually goes to the market or the tavern. Maybe even the catacombs. Alright, I think I'm gonna, like, skip this part, because I've already been to this. Oh, there's a skip! Okay, cool. I can just skip through this. I open my eyes to the insistent sound of fists banging on my door. My head is still pounding, a fuzzy haze settling over me as I drag myself from the relative comfort of my bed and attempt to ignore the ache that has made itself at home behind my eyeballs. I'm not sure if that's because of, like, the headaches I've been having or because of a hangover because you know I've, I've had a couple glasses of wine and you know what wine does to me Ugh. I blink once twice and shit it's dark surely I slept for more than a few hours you better hope you're dead in a bloody ditch somewhere why do I hear boss music fuck hunter neon Pasu, if you don't open this door in the next five seconds then you'll have to pay for a new one I just imagine like uh August like, doing that thing from Fairly Odd Parents where it's like, Oh, Yui! I, res I am being a good parent by respecting your privacy, but I'm using my authority by coming in anyway! Like, that scene. I, I forgot the like the whole quote, but it's like something like that. I'm respecting your privacy by knocking, but asserting my authority as your father by coming in anyway! Did I really sleep for a whole day? Well, at least my death will be at the hands of something other than a ghastly creature, I suppose. Small victories. I look out of the window and it's most definitely past sundown. The Mars is covered in snow, a pristine blanket of perfect white glistening in the moonlight. There are more people in the street than I'd seen the whole time I'd been in Lunaris, and they're hanging brightly colored bunting from between the crooked little houses. I have things to do. Important things. I can hear you in there, you know. Ah, he's breaking the fourth law. I mean, they're breaking the fourth law. Sorry, I forgot that August uses they, then pronouns. The thought of opening the door and seeing August uh, ready to tear my head off is less than appealing, especially when I probably look like I've been dragged through a fey nest and left for dead. I gather my wits and shout as cheerily as I can muster. I'll be down in five minutes! 
I hear a series of incoherent mumbles from the other side of the door, followed by a clack of heels as they walk away without much of a fight. I get the feeling I'm in a lot of trouble. Wonderful. The wolf is full to the brim with red-faced patrons, all wearing far fancier outfits than the usual uninteresting garments they tend to spot. I also see August scowling in the corner, but I almost don't recognize them out of their uniform. He's fought me and I can almost feel my blood freezing as that ice-cold gaze fixes upon me. You thought you were missing. I almost had a search party sent out for you. Sorry, sorry, can you repeat that? I, I couldn't help but stare at your, uh, um, necklace! Yeah, your necklace. You have a very interesting necklace right there. Yeah, that's it. Y your necklace. Yeah, yeah. Necklace, totally for sure. Sorry, I overslept. I really am sorry, General. I overslept. I promise I won't make it a habit. I just, I don't have time for excuses. You missed your chance to brief us when you didn't show for our meeting this morning. But I, but nothing. I stand in silence thinking it might not be such a good idea to push them. If you had intended this morning's meeting, you would know that there's quite an important event happening this evening. We don't have much time thanks to your tardiness, so please bear with me while I explain. We are in the middle of a crisis, yes, but the Lunar Festival is unavoidable. Harry thinks that if we postpone or cancel it, the town will erupt into chaos. Ooh, a festival! <gasps> oh, did I, do I get to go with Alcor or uh, Omen or both? They need stability more than ever right now, and the last thing we need is more panic. Lunar Festival? A festival while there are horrible murders being committed? Trust me, I know, it's abhorrent, to be quite honest. It's a yearly tradition that's been around for centuries. One that Harry holds dear, he's been distant lately. We need our leader back. And if this helps, then I'm willing to play along. And I expect you to do the same. No questions asked, understand? I hardly agree, and I have more than enough on my mind that I need to figure out. But the look August has given me tells me I have little to no choice. And between you and me, I personally think it's a complete and utter waste of time and resources. Especially in the middle of such a crisis. <sighs> they sigh heavily, shrugging as if they've already admitted defeat. Alas, it's important to Harry that we stick with said tradition and show the people of Lenars that everything is exactly as it should be. So just forget about the horrible murders and my sworn duty to protect and serve the people at night then? Yes, you've got it. Oh, okay. So I can technically be free for a little bit, and I don't have a choice. Do you ever? Uh, no. A rather loud cheer rings off from the doorway, and August grimaces, running a hand over their face. The festival itself takes place in the market. Please represent us well, Hunter. All eyes will be on you. And this is the perfect opportunity for you to introduce yourself to the town. Trust me, I'll just act how I do on stream. A complete jackass. Then they look me up and down, apparently unsatisfied with my presentation. Well, to be fair, I didn't take a nap today, so of course I'm going to look like total crap. You want to change it to something a little more interesting, and I suggest you find someone to escort you. It would look a little odd having you wander around by yourself. We have to show solidarity. Um, can I have two people escort me? Uh, stay with August, find Alcar, find Ezra, find Finn, find Omen, find Piper. <clears> hmm. <throat> I'm gonna save here just in case. Ah, oh, this is so hard. Uh, should I do Alcar or Omen? Alright, I'm gonna run a poll and y'all are gonna choose who I'm gonna be uh, hanging out with. Hopefully, like, choosing, like, either one doesn't affect the poly route. Because I still wanna date both. And I hope there's a way to date both. But I'm gonna run a poll. Uh, either, either Alcar or Omen. And if we, uh, up oh, one vote for Omen. Are we going to get any other votes? If we get a tie, uh, then I'll do a, uh, a coin flip. Up oh, two votes for Omen. Alright, are we going to get any more votes for Omen? Or are we going to get Alcar showing up? Or are we going to get a tie? Who knows? Again, I hope this doesn't affect the poly run. If not, I will save just in case. Three votes for Omen. Y'all must really like Omen. I mean, I don't blame you. Omen's a sweetheart, but still. Poor Alcar. He's getting nothing tonight. I mean, I'll hang out with him later. But still. Alright. We're hanging out with Omen. Let's do it. Omen time. I think I know someone that could ask to show me around. Very well, just remember that all eyes are on you. And don't forget the change. I nod, smiling politely. Yes, General. Good evening, Hunter. They talk on an expensive looking fur coat and head out into the chill. Um, yeah. Pimp Zaddy August. Let's go. I look down at my outfit, sighing as I resign myself from the fact I should probably change. The 
cold is biting as I stepped out of the warmth of the wolf. Ooh, pretty. I head for Ezra's shop because that was the last place I saw Omen. I can think of no better person to go with. Snow is still falling and Alaris looks beautiful beneath the blanket of sparkling luscious white. I turned a corner to see Finn and Ezra outside his shop. The mage light lantern flickering and fading as the witch steps onto the street. He squeals as Finn shoves a handful of snow down the back of his coat, shoving the vampire playfully. Finn picks him up and spins him around once, twice the brightest smile on Ezra's flushed, freckled face as he releases him. Ah, gay people. Also, God damn it, Gabby! Uh... Yui, are you going to the festival? Yeah, oh, you look so cute, Ezra, I love the little fur. And uh, Finn, I don't know if you're going to get cold wearing that. I mean, your man titties are like almost sticking out. I mean, but then again, you are a vampire, so I don't know if it's going to affect you too much. I nod eagerly. Yes, well, I was told I had to. Willenheim, I'm guessing? Got it in one. At least you get a night off, I suppose. Cherish it while you can. How are you feeling, by the way? My head is clear after my exceptionally long sleep, but a strange feeling still lingers. I'll be okay, just a little confused. Hopefully I can get some clarity once I get to speak to Harry in August in the morning. They share a loaded look and I feel they're keeping something from me. We better be going if we want to make the most of the festival. Yes, would you like to join us? Actually, I was looking for Omen. Another shared look, this time a little more playful. A demon, hmm? You don't strike me as the type to- Ezra elbows him in the arm, causing the vampire to flinch. Oh, Finn knows. Finn knows that I'm into Omen. Finn again, please. Sorry. He's inside. Take care of him, won't you? And don't let him eat any chocolate, I beg of you. Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, Omen ate like a shit ton of chocolate and Ezra was like really worried for some reason. I forgot why. I will, and noted. Goodbye, Yui. Have fun. They take off down the street, Ezra quietly cursing Finn out as they go. The vampire slings his arm over Ezra's shoulder, throwing his head back and laughing loudly. I can still hear it echoing off on the stone work when they're out of sight. Gay people! I step up onto the stoop and knock once before entering. The shop is warm. A nice reprieve from the biting winter outside. I spot a pointed tail swaying behind the shop counter, and as the bell above the door jingles, Omen pops up. Yui! Oh, my handsome baby! Look at my handsome boy! I love him! Hello, Omen. What are you up to down there? I was just looking for my notes. I thought I'd lost them, but apparently I'm just excellent at hiding stuff. I had to wait for Finn and Ezra to leave to get a proper look around here. I'm not supposed to go near the counter. Why not? He drops his gaze, his tail wrapping around his leg, ears drooping. I may or may not have accidentally set fire to it once. <gasps> Maybe. And he commits arson? Oh, Omen, my beloved, we are going to get along so well. I move to where he stands, and sure enough, the wood at the base is charred blanket. Blackened. Does that happen a lot? He shakes his head, looking a little sad, maybe even guilty. Not really, but it does catch me off guard here and there. I try to control it, but sometimes my emotions get the better of me. But were you looking for Ezra? You just missed him. No, I was looking for you. His eyes grow wide, brow raised. His tail unfurls from around his leg, gently swaying from side to side. He's like a puppy dog. Me? Why? Uh, can I go to the festival? I would take you to the festival. I'm gonna save here just in case. I'm always gonna save here. Always save just in case. You may never know what's gonna happen. I'd like to take you to the festival. I would like to take you to the festival if you'd like that. You would? I laugh, charmed by his obvious shock. Of course, don't you think it would be fun? I think most things with you would be fun. Oh, baby. Can we watch the fireworks together? Oh, and get some hot chocolate? Wait, no, no hot chocolate. You're not allowed to have chocolate. He looks at me as if he's testing the water, waiting to see if Ezra has informed me that he's banned from indulging in the sweeter things. Maybe we'll just stick to the fireworks? He already told you, didn't he? Well, it was worth a shot. Okay, but why can't you have chocolate? He grabs his notebook, tucking it into the safety of his fluffy coat. Let's go. Omen skips along beside me, tipping his head skyward to catch snowflakes on the tip of his tongue. Oh my god, I love him! Baby! Baby boy! He's so childish and I love him. A tongue which I'm startled to discover is alarmingly long and as black as the night. Ayo? I try not to stare, but it's hard. Very hard. Omen, do you mind asking me what kind of demon you are? 
He stops dead in his tracks, looking around to check if we're alone as he continues down the icy cobbled street. Oh, uh, I'm not supposed to tell. Well, that's not suspicious. Watch him be like Satan or something. Does Ezra know? He nods, wrapping his arm around himself. Yes, but I didn't tell him. He just knew. No one else does, though. And I'd love to tell you, but... It's fine. I understand. He smiles, twirling around once, twice, tipping his head back once more. He's clearly enamored with the snow, wiggling his fingers, palm facing upward as he catches flakes against pale skin. They melt upon contact faster than they would if I were to do the same. He looks a little sad, a heavy sigh falling from his lips. Oh, he wants to touch the snow. What's the matter? He stops, turning to face me. Sometimes it sucks being as warm as I am. I love the snow. We don't have it where I come from. But I just can't enjoy it the same as everyone else. <gasps> Make snow angels! Yes! Snow angels! Let's go! I know something fun we could do that you'd be quite good at, actually. You do? I nod, reaching out. He takes my hand and I, and I feel just how warm he is. Not uncomfortable, but definitely a shock at first. Sorry, I know it's weird. We don't have to... It's fine. It's nice. It is? I squeeze his hand to reassure him. His warmth's thinking right down to my bones. I'm freezing. You're warming me up. He smiles and it's soft and unmistakably sweet. I'm glad. I clear my throat, try not to get too distracted by the way he's looking at me with that charming gaze. Oh, I am falling hard. Now I just need to lay in the snow. Lay down in the snow. But it'll just melt underneath me. I drag him towards an undisturbed patch of snow that sits between two houses, falling to my knees and urging him to follow. Sure enough, the, the snow quickly melts beneath him. Well, that's kind of the point here. Just copy me, okay? He nods quickly, following my lead as I lay on my back, still clasping his hand as I splay out my arms and legs. He starts to laugh at me and my flapping, but when he realizes what I'm doing, he enthusiastically joins in. I help him stand when we're done, and his snow angel is far more impressive than my own. See? You can have fun in the snow. You're an angel now. He leans against me, laughter still shaking his shoulders. That's definitely the first time I've ever been called an angel. Well, you should be called an angel more, because you are an innocent baby, and I love you. We reach the market a little while later, having become quite distracted with Omen's fascination with the snow. He's in an amazing mood, bright and cheerful, and I feel my worries melting away while I'm in his presence. He insists that we seek out the area at the market where they sell food and drink, and I keep my wits about me and heed Ezra's warning. No chocolate. You're serious? I stand my ground, even when he looks at me with those big brown eyes. Ezra said no, and I trust that he's looking out for you. Do you want to tell me why you can't have chocolate? I might be a little allergic to it. Allergic? That's the thing? You're allergic? Wait, can you be allergic to chocolate? That's a thing? Demons can have allergies? Apparently, yeah. Then definitely not. I don't want you getting sick. He huffs, sliding up to me, his tail swaying lazily behind him. All that happens is that my tongue gets a little weird, tingly even. I clear my throat, nodding. Okay. A heavy, stubborn sigh, and I wonder if I'm about to see a demon temper tantrum. He doesn't supply any further information and instead offers me a shy smile. Tingly? He nods, his tail curling around my wrist, giving it an insistent tug. Please? Just a little? No! Oh god, I had to let him have chocolate? It's gonna kill him! <sighs> Whatever. I'm doing it for demon cock. I find it quite hard to deny him when he's looking at me like that. I sigh to feed him, but if I have said yes, he's excitedly clapping. Fine, but just a tiny taste. Nothing too crazy. Deal? Deal. You pick something, and we'll share. I return with a box of chocolate truffles, lovingly wrapped in gold tissue paper and tied with a red bow. This reminded me of you, the colors. Yes, they're my favorite. Now it's chocolate time. I roll my eyes, unable to stop myself from smiling as I open the box, letting him pick one. He delicately brings it to his lips, taking a careful bite. He hums contently as he chews, and I take the other half of the truffle from him before I, he has a chance to swallow it whole. It tastes amazing. Yes, well, it's always the things we like the most that we can't have. He sticks his hand in his mouth and I quickly crowd closer, prying it away. Are you okay? He clears his throat, lashes fluttering as he looks at me. I'm fine, it's just a little tingle. It's annoying, sure, but it's also quite... nice. What do you mean by that? Oh. I clear my throat, trying to snap myself from this little daze I've suddenly fallen into. One where I'm apparently fixing on a demon's tongue. Hey, yo, what that tongue do? As long as you're okay. Aren't the fireworks due to start soon? 
Omen shrugs, looking up at the sky. I lost track of time. I'm having too much fun with you. Oh, my son. I smile back, warm blooming in my chest. We should make our way there, just to be sure. The docks are packed, teeming with people. <gasps> Pretty! We squeeze as close as we can, but Omen stays close. Apparently not a huge fan of such a huge crowd. I'm gonna watch Omen, but in a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, there we go. Watch Omen. The sky suddenly comes alive with loud, bright bursts of ever-changing colors. I tear my gaze from the fireworks looking at Omen. He's transfixed, staring up at the sky with such naked wonder that my chest aches. Wow, they're so, so beautiful. He needs my gaze, blushing when he sees I'm already looking at him. Do you see me? I nod silly, a small smile creeping up onto my lips. I see. Even over the loud boom of the fireworks, I hear his breath pitch. And unless I'm seeing things, a low, deep orange glow thrumming right where his heart lies. Place his hands upon his chest, fingers curling in the fabric of his jacket, an impossible warmth radiating off him. The colors that burst in the sky reflect upon his pale skin, and I see just how dark his eyes have turned, almost black. He closes them, long lashes resting atop pink cheeks. The display comes to an end, the crowd cheering, clapping. I lean in. Then, somewhere in distance, I hear an awful, bone chilling scream. Oh, god damn it! I got cock blocked! No! Oh, I got the achievement. Went to the Lunar Festival. Oh. And I'm glad we're getting this uh, this beautiful CG Wait, when a murder happens. That's great. Love that. 10 out of 10. Oh. Any dialogue options labeled fight in this chapter will lead to scenes containing violence and gore. Player discretion is advised. Okay. Well, thank you for the alert, for the uh, warning. Cold winter wind whips against my skin as I run as fast as I can, sinking deeper into the ominous woodland that surrounds Lenaris. I'm hot on Piper's heels, and she's determined and hyper-focused as I am. There's nothing like the hunt. The way my instincts drive every feeling, my senses sharpen to a knife's edge. My every thought is fixated on winning, and only winning. I can think of nothing else but finding the source of the, the, the distress. A terrible sense of dread swirling deep in my gut. The woods are teeming with every hunter and enforcer Lunaris has to offer. Each and every one of us silently hoping that this isn't what we think it is. That this isn't the fifth victim that we've all been expecting. Another one of our comrades targeted and slain so brutally, and without an apparent motive. Killed simply for doing their job, protecting humankind. My feet pound the frost crisp grass, tall trees with gnarled branches that curl inward like talons, almost naked from winter's grass looming high above us. I spot eyes glowing in the darkness, but I quickly realize that they're carved messily into the rickety tree trunks. They glow ominously, and as another gust of wind blows, I swear I see them blink. I make a mental note to remind myself to return to investigate, though I'm sure they're nothing new, not in a town like this. Piper skids to a stop, her fingers diligently hovering just above the handle of each of her daggers that sit safely in the cold of her back. Do you hear that? Oh, hello, queen. A quiet but obvious whisper echoes across the trees. A pain grown from something unquestionably inhuman, from a creature. I did. Her fingers twitch, and so do mine. Eyes narrowed, every sense razor sharp, and, zo and zoned in on that singular point. It feels young and inexperienced. It's beneath our skill level. Beneath us. She says it with such a confidence, but her guard is still firmly up. The duo of wide-eyed hunter sergeants that have been ordered to tail us arrive at her side. Their cheeks rosy from the harsh bite of the wind. Major? Piper opens her mouth to respond, but she pauses looking at me. You're the highest rank here, General. Do we move on and let these two handle it? Or do you fancy working out some tension? Uh... I'm gonna say... Leave it to them. Because I kind of want to go back to Omen. I address the sergeant's director, deciding it's far more important that we continue to run through the rendezvous point and find August. Take care of it. They nod dutifully, unsheathing their weapons. Oh, I hope they don't fucking die. Piper and I watch Ramon as they slowly but surely sink into the darker depths of the forest. I always itch for a fight, but tonight we have other matters to attend to. We hear the unmistakable snarl of the youngling as we continue on our path, followed by the loud, echoing clash of steel. I try to still my racing heart and switch my focus back on the mission in hand. My blood still itching for a fight. I'm taken aback by how vast this woodland is and the seemingly never-ending rows of trees that disappear if you try to look too far. How much further until we're not in Lunaris anymore? Piper shrugs, 
Her strides long and purposeful, wind whipping at her hair. I don't know exactly, but I'm pretty sure there's more forest than there is town. It makes sense, I suppose, considering Lunaris' strangely heightened level of creature activity. There must be a lot of space for them to dwell in. Viper skids to a stop yet again, her hand raised. With a heavy sigh, she turns to face me. Her cheeks kiss pink from the binding cold, as I'm sure mine are too. She squints at me, just something on her mind. This feels weirdly normal, doesn't it? I blink, confused. Normal? She feigns anger, her lip curling back over her perfectly white teeth. I mean us being out here together. My eyes widen and I catch myself before she registers my shock and takes offense. It does, yeah. Together sounds right, doesn't it? I write better alone. It does, yes. I can't deny it. I do feel sort of a kinship with Piper. Being out here with her is far easier than I anticipated anyway. It does feel quite normal, actually. I like it. I've never really had a partner other than August before. I know this isn't really the time or place to get sentimental, but I have to admit that I'm glad you're not a complete wanker. Um, thank you? I place my hand over my heart. I'm flattered. What an honor, Hunter Merriman. Don't make me take it back. Piper tilts her head to the side. A loud crack as her bones click right into the rightful place. Let's dash. Easy to tell what we're dealing with as we draw near to the scene. Dozens of hunters and forces of varying ranks saturate the small clearing, majority of them still dressed in their festival attire, much like Piper and I. We spot a retrieval team emerging from the tree line. Their faces are pale and drawn. It's then that I know they didn't make it. Uh, you're here. Hello, Pimp Zaddy August. We are. <sighs> August sighs heavily, turning to look at the overwhelming scene that unfolds before us. It's no good news, as I'm sure you can tell. My heart sinks. I knew, but hearing out loud is still unpleasant. Do we have an identity? They shake their head, brushing the front of their fur coat, and that I'm sure they're less than happy about wearing in such a situation. We cannot identify them. Their voice catches. There is no body. Again, nothing but, uh, well, I don't need to repeat such monstrous details. You've read the reports from the previous murders. Much of the same ghastliness. Piper scoffs, her shoulders tensing, and I swear I can see tears in her eyes. She's hurting and angry. This is fucking ridiculous. This cannot keep happening, August. I flinch, feeling the surge of energy as August reacts. The smell of ozone is suddenly thick in the air. Thank you, Piper, for your input. I didn't know this was upsetting. I assumed everyone was enjoying this. A dozen eyes turn to look at them, and they quickly calm themselves. August looks beyond exhausted, as always. The skin beneath their eyes is purple, their cheeks drawn. Piper opens her mouth to retaliate, but wisely decides against it. This actually might be the first time I've seen her look guilty. August averts their gaze as if they can't bear to look at her. They're upset too. I suggest you keep your thoughts to yourself in such a situation. Unless you have any useful insight. It's not a question. Yes. Sorry, General. I thought as much. We're all hurting, Piper. Not just you. August sighs deeply, sparing us both a woeful glance before they address the gathered forces. Hunters, any mages present will patrol the immediate area. Generals will head further afield and begin an extensive perimeter search. I want no stone unturned here. Any juniors need to get the hell out of here. You're not equipped to even think about dealing with whatever this thing is. And I won't be responsible for your demise. Anyone else present is to report back to headquarters immediately. We'll need people on the ground in order to reassure the townsfolk. I don't want this causing widespread panic. It's damage control time. There's a quiet, subdued mumble of yes, General, and they all dutifully begin to obey August's orders, disappearing in various directions. Would you like to join me in the perimeter search? No, I'd like you to go home. Leave this to the others. We need you ready for anything that may transpire overnight. Of course. Piper fidgets, uneasy. What? Well, you're a major, aren't you? If you were listening, you'll know what I asked of you. The tension between them is yet again immensely unpleasant. Of course, General. She should have expected such a response, and I wonder if she'll learn, or maybe she's hoping to rile them up. I can't tell. She throws me a quick pitiful glance before she glares at August and turns to join her comrade. Later. August massages their temples, inhaling sharply. I notice that their hands are trembling, and I unconsciously take a step towards them. Grateful that they might pass out. They hold out their hand. I'm fine, really. General, 
Bitch, you ain't fine. You haven't slept in days. I appreciate your concern, Hunter. Really. Anything that ails me is my fault and mine alone. Now please head back. I meant it when I said I need you rested. You'll be the first to hear if anything significant happens. I'll send a messenger to retrieve you when the victim has been identified. Of course. Good night and stay safe. If you think I'm staying out here in this for another second, you're sorely mistaken. I have a mountain of paperwork the size of the IVAC on my desk. Farewell, Yui. Take a final look at the scene where the Enforcer Witches have cast their ma mage lights over a bloody patch of grass, leaving them to their work no matter how much long I long to investigate. After that outburst, it's best not to question my Enforcer's request. I bow my head before I turn, eager to get out of here. As I head back through the woodland, I notice how eerily silent it is. A strange sense of calm wash washes over me, then... A whisper. Harry. I stop dead in my tracks, my hand hovering over my weapon. I see nothing, feel nothing, no matter how hard I concentrate. I won't be surprised if it's Harry still. I said this last time that I think Harry did it, because he looks like a fucking villain. And I swear to God, if it is Harry, then y'all gotta sub to me. Y'all gotta give me, like, subs because I'm such a smart genius. I don't know. And then I realize, that voice, the familiar yet subdued ache that begins to creep into my temple. James? You deserve to know. The pain adds and flows, my breathing growing unsteady, almost as if something weighs heavy upon my chest. The fleeting, comforting calm that had just settled over me is snatched away as his voice continues to echo in my mind. Know what? I'm sorry. A sharp burning pain shoots up along my spine, and I fell to the ground. The snow-covered grass is wet beneath my fingertips. His words were cut off, and after a moment, I'm yet again surrounded by a blissful silence. Fucking ghost. Okay, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Alright, if I'm if I'm right, I get subs. But if I'm wrong, I will do bottom collar for an entire stream for free. Deal? And you can keep my word for it. I drag myself to my feet and I only have one thing on my mind. One thing that I must do. Visit the Lieutenant General and find out what the hell is happening to me. After having no luck finding him in his own office, I head to the only other place I assume he may be at this hour. The door to August's office is thankfully ajar, so I peek around the frame, finding Harry standing alone. He has a report in hand, his coat hung on the back of August's chair. He looks exhausted, his eyes red-rimmed. However, when he notices me, he still offers me a bright, earnest smile. I can't tell you how relieved I am to see you safe. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you are, Mr. Totally Not Suspicious. I mean, Chet, look at him! I dare you to tell me he doesn't look at least a little suspicious. He's clearly villain core. My throat feels tight and I can't place why. James is doing a good job of making it difficult for me to stop thinking about him. The pain I felt from his final moment was raw, like an exposed nerve. For some reason when I think of it, I now think of Harry. I need to know why he wanted me to come here, why everything seems to point back to the man standing before me. I need to tell you something, but I need you to promise that you won't think I've lost my mind. Harry narrows his gaze, nodding once. Go on. I visited the graveyard a few days ago while I was getting my bearings. He stays silent, but I can't help but notice the way his knuckles bleed white as he tightens his fist. I felt an overwhelming sense of grief there, pain, a yearning for a lost love, a sense of failure, and crippling sorrow. I thought nothing of it at the time. It's not unheard of for those that have been murdered to feel scared or sentimental in their final moments, in my experience. But Harry drops his gaze. His bright eyes sat in the edge of tears. My words threatened to catch him in my throat, but I relent. The other night I visited again, it was almost like something was pulling me there. I heard more. Not just a memory this time. He just spoke to me. He looks like he's seen a ghost. He stares at me wide-eyed, quickly swiping at his cheeks. Oh, James. I get the horrible feeling that he's been waiting for this. I need to know. He nods, clearly understanding that he takes a deep, shuddering breath. James was assigned as my very first hunter the moment we both graduated at 18. He'd shown remarkable promise in school, basically skipping all of the junior nonsense that they force on you. I, too, had impressed, so we were placed together in the hopes that we'd become unstoppable. We were inseparable in the field together for decades, until I took this post as Lieutenant General. You two were gay lovers, weren't you? I'm gonna call it here, gay lovers. If I get that right, then I get, uh, probably a sub. Probably not, I don't know. I don't know if y'all will sub to me for that. Because, I don't know, he looks gay, too. Anyway, okay, okay. If he turns out to be gay, I get, like, a sub. Y'all gonna sub to me. But if I turn out to be wrong, uh, I'll... 
I'll do another stream with the bald, bottom collar for an entire year. Not entire year, an entire day. Okay, deal. A pause and another deep breath on that shakes. But as well as being my subordinate, he was also my partner. Ha! I knew it! He is gay! Gay, gay, homosexual, gay! Suck to me, bitches! <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> well, I'll be a son of a bitch. I knew he was gay. I have the best gaydar in the world. <laughs> Hand him over, boys. Hand him over. <laughs> My husband. Yeah, see? See? In case y'all were gonna argue, oh, uh, you, you probably meant a partner as in, like, uh, I don't know, like, fighting partner or something. No, he confirmed it. That's his husband, his lover. He is fruity. He's gay. Gay, gay, homosexual gay. My heart sings, bile rising in my throat. Okay, so he probably didn't do the murder, though. Okay, we'll just have to wait and see what that, what happens with that, okay? I know I was right about the uh, the gay thing, but maybe I'm not. I'm wrong about the evil thing. Who knows? I've read countless reports about him in the infamous Hunter Lane over the years, but I never knew his first name or anything about him other than his incomparable work. Official records tend to omit personal details for the safety of the hunter or enforcer in question unless they become a leader like Harry. They were imitable, the best of the best. Together, they killed some of the most nefarious creatures in our history, and without question, every young trainer aspires to be just like Hunter Lane. I think that he's just gone and what Harry must be going through. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. For nearly ten years, yes. But we'd known each other forever. I failed the hunter initiation quite dramatically. And he was taken away to his father's home country to train to become what I'd always dreamed of becoming. Life had other plans for me. But we still found each other in the end. He used to joke that we were destined. The romantic fool. I really don't think it's sunk in that he's gone just yet. I keep thinking he's going to walk through my door, covered head to toe in blood and grime, with a stupid, wonderful grin on his face. I noticed how his eyes light up when he talks about it. They say that people deal with grief differently. But I haven't quite figured mine out just yet. I apologize for not telling you, but it was important to me that I could trust you first. My judgment has been impaired, I'll admit it. Though this turn of events isn't exactly what I expected. All I can think about now is justice. About the others that died before him, and what we could have done to stop it. What I could have done to stop it. What did he tell you when he spoke to you? His words waver, and he mindlessly fiddles with his wedding band, eagerly awaiting my response. I think about what Ezra said about being careful who I share this with. Did that warning apply to the Lieutenant General of all of Escria? I'm gonna save it right here just in case. Uh, I'm gonna tell him the truth? He told me to leave, that he failed, that there's no hope. He swallows thickly, his expression unchanging. I got the impression he wanted to say more, but I don't know how he managed to communicate with me in the first place. I think he can only say so much before he fades away. It feels like a great struggle for him to reach out. He closes his eyes tight, shaking his head as if he can't bear to hear anymore. I will need you to speak to Augustus about this. They know more about psionic magic than anyone here. I'm sure they'll be able to help you figure this out. I do not trust anyone else. Then a hopeful look. Did... Did he truly not say anything else? He didn't, but the first night that I felt him, I could tell how much he loved you, Harry. You were all you could think about in his final moments. He laughs quietly. <laughs> yes. Well, he's all I can think about, too. A curse now, I suppose. Silence hangs heavy between us. I don't quite know what to say next. He looks devastated, understandably. He must have so much on his mind already with the latest murder and now this. The way he came alive when he spoke about James didn't go unnoticed. And I wonder if maybe talking about him would look his mood. There's a lot of hunters out there that can only aspire to be as half as brilliant as Hunter Lane. I would love to hear what he was like if you don't mind. His somber expression disappears and he seems to brighten up a little. He was a cocky son of a bitch, but it worked well for him in the field. He was never careless, though. I often found myself watching him instead of paying attention to whatever was attacking us. Luckily, he could fight well enough to protect us both, or I am sure we'd have been in trouble. A lot of enforcers choose to stay cooped up in a stuffy office away from all that danger. Working with James made me not want to miss a thing. 
He digs into his coat pocket, retrieving his wallet and pulling out a small weathered photo. He pauses, staring me down as if he has reservations, but then he hands it over. It's of him and Jane. They look young, beyond happy, and impossibly in love. Aww. <laughs> we were unbearable to be around, I'm sure. I study the genuine smiles that, in the way their fingers are laced together. I may not know James aside from the voice in my head, but I feel a strange connection to him, as if I'd known him forever. Thank you for showing me. He checks the photo back into his place right beside a neatly folded up letter. Well, apparently he appears to have taken a liking to you. It's only fair for you to put a face to the name, I suppose. He stares down at his hand, once again twisting his wedding band. His expression is neutral when he meets my gaze, but in a split second, his disposition shifts to the stiff formality I'm so used to when dealing with figures of authority. I gather that our conversation about his dearly departed is over. What happened tonight could have been prevented. It's unacceptable that we were so aware of the looming threat, and yet we let our guard down and lost another life. This cannot happen again. Wait, does that mean I don't get any more days off? Because I really need to romance a demon in a lichen. I'm not, agreeing wholeheartedly, but I cannot shake the feeling that, yes, this could have been prevented if it weren't for the festival. The festival he was so adamant went ahead despite our clear apprehension against including August. I think better of pressing the matter. Harry suddenly doesn't seem like a man willing to admit fault. Did you speak to the twins as I requested? I did. As I'm sure you expected, I didn't get much out of them. A quiet hum, which I think is an indifferent agreement, and Harry sighs heavily. They are rather adept at both lying and sheer avoidance. I am interested in speaking to the brother alone, though. There's something off about him, like he just didn't want to be there. I also came across a letter outside the building. One that was addressed to him. The language looked demonic. Harry nods, indifferent, and I wonder if he even heard me. He clears his throat and flicks his eyes to the side, as though he has no interest in humoring me any longer. There's nothing more you can do here until we've identified the victim. Get some rest. It's late. You're dismissed, Hunter. Though I'm not used to being addressed in such a manner, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't perplexed by shifted in his demeanor. I chalk it down to grief, just like he said, but I can't help but feel like maybe I've disappointed him somehow. I turn and I quietly leave. Snow is still falling as I step outside. Though the hour is late, there's certainly no peaceful quiet in Umlaris tonight. The streets outside of headquarters are busting with hunters, enforcers, and everything in between. I keep my head down as I make my way towards the wolf. I fall into a trance as I replay my conversation with Harry over and over, trying to pinpoint the exact moment that made him change his out attitude so drastically. I'm snapped back into reality when I bump into something cold and hard, finding a pair of familiar golden eyes staring back at me when I look up. Distracted, are we? Titty. I mean hyphen. Chat, please don't flip that. I step back, brushing down in front of my coat. I can see that his lips are on the cusp of curling to the side in a vaguely amused smirk. You could say that. It's been a long night. He offers me a sympathetic look, shoving his hands firmly into his coat pocket as the two of enforcers pass by. They make a point to glare at him, and by proxy at me for being near him. Finn dutifully avoids their gaze like a man who has had centuries to perfect feigning indifference to the way people like me treat him and his kind. I'm glad to see you safe, Yui. We were all worried for you when we heard. Thank you, Finn. He turns to check the street is clear, turning back to me with a serious look. I have my clan patrolling the woods. I'll ensure that they're out until dawn, searching if necessary. Anything we can do to help find whatever or whoever is doing this. I'm grateful for the assistance, and I certainly can't say I've ever had an entire clan of vampires as allies before. I'm optimistic that their help will be of great value to me. That's very kind. After an indescript and indecipherable... I can't fucking read! Pause. Finn's expression drifts somewhere far away. You know, I was out there just now. I picked up a scent. Something familiar. Familiar how? He sits closer and there's a certain air of caution in the way he dresses me. As if he's unsure that we're alone. I didn't get to hang around. There are too many enforcers, but... The blood on that stone we found in the graveyard at the scene of... He pauses, apprehension clouding the way he looks at me. His next words are glum and as dead as his demeanor. Of Hunter Lane's death. He's testing the wires if the way he holds my stairs is anything to go by. We need to see just how clued in I am. I know about him, Finn. I spoke to Harry just now. He might be a vampire, but the look that crossed his face momentarily isn't exactly subtle. He casts his eyes away from me, the frown that settled at his brow softening around the edges. He licks one of his fangs, thinking with a forlornness that suits him a little too well. I see. And how did that go? I shrug because I can't really offer him anything else. I feel deflated and defeated. 
Not great. He's in mourning. I don't think he's in the right mind to be th making decisions. Ben presses his lips, contemplating my statement. That's a bold way to speak of your lieutenant general. But I don't doubt your instincts. I've lost loved ones, and it's never easy. The mind needs time to heal after such trauma. And all Harry is doing is delaying his grief. The immortality is a bitch. Eventually, he throws me a half-hearted smile, but I sense it's something pitiful rather than friendly. I suspect my frustration with my current predicament is glaringly obvious without him having to read my thoughts. I'm sorry you've been kept so in the dark. I can sense that you're frustrated, and I don't blame you. As much as I may not agree with certain information being withheld, it truly is for your safety. It's funny because everyone keeps saying such things, but it certainly doesn't feel like anything other than sheer avoidance. He moves a hand from his pocket, running long fingers through his hair with a knowing glance. Yes, well, I cannot excuse anyone else's behavior, but I can apologize for my own. Come by the catacombs when you get the chance. I have some things we can discuss that may help. Though spending some time underground in a tome sounds less than appealing, Finn doesn't look like the kind of man who lives in squalor. Plus, any information is valued, and Finn has lived here long enough to know the ins and outs of this strange little town. Thank you. I'll take you up on that as soon as I can. He tips his head, encouraging me to follow him towards the wolf, I assume. Come on, I'll walk you home. I am eager to get inside, and with a few strides, I catch up to him, falling in step. I don't require an escort, you know. Everyone seems to sit so and ensuring I'm safe, but you all seem to be forgetting I was brought here to save the day. Supposedly. Prince his lips in an obvious attempt to stop himself from laughing, and I watch the fall of his throat as he swallows the noise. I'm aware that you require no assistance. But think about the hunters that were killed. They were of your caliber, your rank. The best of the best, as the enforcers love to say. The thought of you ending up like them is not a pleasant one. Okay, you know what? Fair point, then. Fair point. He has a point, I suppose. Yeah, see? Exactly. Very well, but no coddling. Understood? Yes, General. He laughs again when he catches sight of the dramatic roll of my eyes, sidestepping with starling grace to avoid the elbow that I launched toward his ribcage. We walk quietly through the streets, the cobblestone glistening with frost, the moon is full, it hangs low in the sky, as it always seems to have here in Lunaris. The Finn exhales sharply to break the silence. I glance at him, too tired to ask him any of the hundreds of questions that run through my mind. I think he knows, somehow, because he, uh, he also seems to have something on the tip of his tongue. We stop outside the wolf, the lantern that hangs above the door dark thanks to the late hour. I glance up at the now familiar sign, a scrappy looking white wolf howling at a full moon, and I laugh. Finn leans against the mismatched brick and stares at me, quite intently, his eyes unnervingly bright in the growing darkness. What's funny? You're all masters at being painfully cryptid, and yet I still feel at home. But I shouldn't trust a single one of you, should I? He turns, checking we're alone again before he leans a little closer, his voice slow. That's for you to decide. So, tell me, Hunter. What does that tricky little gut of yours tell you about all of this? About us? What do you feel? To be honest, I feel a little bored because I'm not getting fucked right now. Just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I like this game. I like this game. I just had to get it out there. <laughs> like it's time for me to go. Like we should talk. Like I need a drink. I'm gonna save here because I kind of want to get a drink. So, like I need a drink. You know, it's a shame that the bar is closed. I would kill for a drink right about now. The grinning off with me tells me I probably said the wrong thing, finding him to be devious. You think I've lived here for centuries and not broken into the tavern for a late night beverage? Then you're sorely mistaken. Ah, we're gonna be uh, crime fighters. Nice, nice. Love to see it. I love, I love committing little crimes. I don't doubt that, and it's certainly tempting, but... No, I shouldn't. I need a clear head tomorrow. As clear as I can muster with all of this fog anyway. Speak for yourself! I want a drink! I wonder what August would think if their new star general was caught stealing from the local with a vampire. <laughs> I'm willing to find out. I join him in his laughter. The mere thought of August being informed of such transgressions give me the boost I need to drag myself up those stairs. You're yet to discover just how easy August is to fluster, and I implore you to find out. They turn quite a startling shade of red. I don't doubt that, but I've seen August mildly angry, and I can't say I'm all that fond of it. I'd rather not get zapped. He shrugs, lips pursed. That's fair. I really should get some rest. A pleasure as always. And remember... We've got your back. Should we find anything of interest overnight, I'll come running. Daylight permitting, of course. 
Good night, Hunter. I turn a smile, pushing the heavy door to the wolf open and praying it doesn't creak and wake up the other residents. Good night, then. I watch him go before I close the door, only the light of the moon guiding his way as he disappears into the darkness. I finally settle upon the hard mattress, the cheap sheets harsh against my skin as I attempt to get comfortable. Light from the low, hanging moon pours into my room. I scrub myself clean of any traces of grime from the hunt, and I can't help but feel irritated from the sheer lack of progress I've made so far. I come to the conclusion that there are too many secret keepers in this town, and I refuse to feel defeated, or to let it continue. Overwhelmed by today's events, I find myself falling into a sleep, swift and dreamless sleep. Reality settles over me when I wake, a thick smog that almost suffocates me as I reluctantly drag myself from the almost comfort of my bed. I haven't had anywhere near enough rest, but I must relent. I gather the energy to dress and head downstairs to face whatever obstacles are hastily and inevitably shoved in my way. Oh, it's daytime. Okay, cool. As my eyes take in the bleary sight of the empty tavern, the hideous sound of the scraping of wood against stone assault my ears. In the corner of the room, Alcar stumbles to his feet. The chair he's been sitting on almost toppling over. Catches it and sets it right. Then grimaces briefly before stalking over to me. Finally, I get to talk to Alcar today. Let's go! It's easy to see the hunch of his shoulders and the stiffness of his posture for a moment. I wonder if he's hurt somehow. But as he comes closer, it seems more likely he's only... worried, perhaps? Not unusual, but with the commotion last night, it still puts me ill at ease. Oh, I thought uh, they were about to say drunk. And he's just doing some day drinking. I don't need supernatural senses to know that this is going to be another pebble on the mountain of mysteries. He looks a mess. What has he been doing? Rolling around on the forest floor? Hunter, I need to speak with you. Ooh, you look so mysterious with that hood on. He doesn't sound like the aloof cocky half like and I've come to know. He speaks forcefully, but there's a tremor in his voice that's hard to miss. What's wrong? What? Why is there blood? It better not be your blood, I swear to God. The frown deepens. Instead of explaining himself, Alcar holds out his hand and then curls his fingers, revealing a crumbled up ball of fabric. For a moment, I stare at him, and at the thing he's holding without com comprehension, Alcar stares back, his expression telling me he thinks I'm an idiot for not getting it. But then I realize the distinctive purple under the dirt and the dried crusted blood in my stomach drops. A hunter's sash. Alcar is holding a hunter's sash in his hand. Or what's left of it. The thing is in a sorry state, its original color almost indistinguishable under the grime. Carefully I reach out to take it from him for a closer inspection. It doesn't belong to the hunter that was killed last night. It doesn't belong to any of them. It's not right. The smell. I stare at him in disbelief, shaking my head as I feel the gritty fabric between my fingers. Then who does it belong to? Alcar shrugs half-heartedly. In the tavern's uncertain light, his face is drawn and his eyes are sunken. Exhausted, I realize, but his tail still flicks back and forth, back and forth. In impatience or agitation, it's hard to tell with him. All I know is that Alcar is telling the truth, if for no other reason other than he's too worn out for deception. I tried, but I couldn't tell. I searched all night with Finn's clan, but we came up short. He looks over his shoulder, checking to ensure we don't have company. I have to be careful. I can't be seen with such things. They'll... They'll suspect you? <sighs> A sharp exhale, and he admits defeat. Shoulders drooping, ears flat against his head. There's as much bitter resentment in his voice as there is sulk. They'll make me pay for my generosity with my own blood. Again. Again. The certainty in which he says it makes my stomach drop almost as much as his grim resignation. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just in case. I can protect you. I raise an eyebrow at him, even as I very carefully pocket the piece of evidence. I haven't forgotten the brief conversation with Finn in the graveyard about the strange smelling blood. It feels like a vague but wor worthwhile puzzle piece. And despite himself, Alcar delivered it to me, a stranger and a hunter at that. Probably precisely because I am a stranger. Fuck knows he probably doesn't trust any of my uh, colleagues in this town still. It got me touched. Don't worry, Alcar. I won't mention you. And even if they do try to give you trouble for it, they'll have to get through me first. Alcar's jaw drops. He stares at me like I've just said something outlandish before the moment passes, and he takes a step back, a bark of a laugh bubbling out of him. Heh. <laughs> Get it? Bark. Because he's the dog. Heh <laughs> heh. Oh, that's rich. I glare at him, and he grins right back without an ounce of humility. Richer than you, that's for sure. Ooh, I'm calling his poor ass out. Ooh. What are you, 12? Right on your level then, right? Ooh. 
The girls are fighting! The girls are fighting! The grin widens, his canines bear sharp and large, and in genuine amusement. Alcar surveys me for a moment with his arms still crossed, but there is something else in his gaze now. After a moment, he laughs again but averts his eyes. I don't miss that. Nor did I miss the blush. Ooh, and now he blushing. Nor the fact that he can't seem to stop grinning. You're a fucking riot, Hunter. You're damn right I am! Seems you're tight. He rolls his eyes, looking none too upset. He leans closer suddenly, lowering his voice despite the empty tavern. I don't know how much or how little you've decided to trust the pomps in that workplace of yours. And I said all that shit about not trusting anyone. But just listen to me this once. Take that to Ezra, not your superior. He regards me with beseeching intensity, eyes flickering across my face like he's looking for some sort of give, something he can trust. I don't know if I can give it to him. Alcar's concern for his own well-being, I understand. This, this is different. Yet I have no desire to bother Harry this morning, not after last night, and not over an inconclusive scrap of something that smells strange. August is another mystery altogether. Ezra does have a wonderful little shop full of witchy magic in a town this small. I can only surmise he would be the one with the most tools at his disposal to suss out an analysis for something like this. Wait, it's sus! Sus! Like Among Us! Among Us sus! Gonna go into the vent and kill someone like Among Us! Wee woo wee woo! God, what the fuck is wrong with me? Alright, I'll go to Ezra with this. Alcar stares at me for a second longer, like he doesn't know if I was being honest. Eventually, however, his shoulders relax and he takes a step back. Then my job's done. Hope you don't mind me quitting this place. The tavern's no fun when there's nobody here to annoy. He drops into a mocking, half-ass bow, his tail swishing, and then all but squeezes himself out of the door right past me before I can so much as frown. I stare where Alcar has already vanished, and I wonder for a moment if I should chase him down. He's no hunter, and I have a feeling, not entirely natural, that the thing out there isn't in interested in lichens, which is demons or vampires. It's not something to do with the killing pattern, it's... Sighing, I tuck my coat a little tighter around myself and reluctantly make to follow his path. Breakfast will have to wait. The shop is empty when I arrive, the comforting tinkle of the bell that sits above the door welcoming me. Ezra is nowhere to be seen, but I do spot a small white cat curled up at the foot of the shop counter. A curious creature, one that gives off the same soothing magical aura as her assumed owner. Let me guess, that's just gonna be Ezra, isn't it? The purple curtain that separates the shop and living quarters twitches, and Ezra emerges, clutching a cup of steaming tea. Oh, okay. I guess that's his familiar then. I'm so relieved to see that you're okay. Cat's ears twitch at the sound of his voice, and she stretches, sauntering over to him and parading herself in between his legs. He ignores her, moving to place his tea upon the counter. I heard that he had to depart the festival quite abruptly. We were all worried. I nod politely, offering a clipped smile. I did, unfortunately. I hope you've had enough rest. You look exhausted. Not that I'm surprised after what I assume was an incredibly late evening. Would you like some tea? The sash feels heavy in my coat. As much as I enjoy exchanging pubs and trees with the witch, I'm here for a reason. I actually need your help with something quite urgent. You do? What is it? Both the cat and Ezra watch me intently as I retrieve the sash, the violet bloodied fabric unfurling as I hold it up. The cat hisses, her hackles raised as she darts into the back room. That paired with the look on Ezra's face unnerves me, and I sigh heavily, exasperated as he rushes past me to lock the front door. Dead bolt and all. He faces the door, his palms splayed uh, upon the window pane. It glows a pleasant shade of blue as he whispers what I assume would be a ward incantation before he, he turns to join me. They were quite clearly alone. His voice is tactfully quiet. Where exactly did you get that? The words rush out of him, and his aura is panicked, so much so that I begin to feel a terrible sense of unease washing over me. Ezra is the one person I truly had no hesitation about trusting from the start, someone I thought I could rely on, but I find myself questioning his intentions. Could he possibly already know who this belongs to? And if so, how? Alcar found it in the woods last night. He told me to bring it to you and only you. He rushes a hand through his curls and I notice that it's shaking. Ezra, are you okay? A heavy exhale and he closes his eyes, shaking his head before he meets my gaze. I don't think you understand. This puts us all in danger. Danger? I don't understand. It's just a sash. I simply hope you, you could identify who it belonged to. You're aware of who its owner is, I assume, based on your reaction. I play dumb, disguising my interest and the fact that I know it's not the new victims. If he's hiding something, I'll find out. 
Lose around to the other side of the counter, nervously rearranging a pile of glowing crystals and pushing aside a dish filled with colorful gems. He spares me a glance as he takes a seat, and then he forces a smile. I have an inkling, yes. May I? He holds out his hand, which I observe is now perfectly steady. I'm hesitant to part with the scrap after that little display of uncertainty, but it seems to, to click in his thoughts. Are you sure? He nods, wiggling his fingers impatiently. As sure as I'll ever be. Now, let us get this over with. As soon as the sash meets his palm, a bright emerald light emanates from his fingertips. The fabric covers midair, suspended by vibrant whorls of magic. I, just, I thought this was fucking whores of magic. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Ezra was a whore of magic. <laughs> <laughs> the movement of Ezra's hands is fluid like water as he commands his spell. I watch in awe as the mark forms before him, indecipherable shapes shifting and changing. His eyes are alight, brighter than ever as the blood that coats the sash seems to pull away from the fabric, suspended alongside his magic. It's beautiful, a truly impressive display, but I ensure I don't take my eyes off him for even a second. His lips part, his brow deeply furrowed as he concentrates. He doesn't look pleased, and I'm not entirely sure exactly what he's doing, but whatever it is, I just hope that it helps. This is the first solid piece of evidence I'd managed to get my hands on, and I refuse to rest until I get a name. A sharp inhale and Ezra closes his eyes tight, the magic dissipating, and the sash falls and settles upon the wood. He drops his head, his knuckles tight as he grips the edge of the counter. I had a feeling. Ezra, work with me here. I need you to be honest. He looks scared, maybe even a little upset. This is way bigger than me, but I can't in good conscience keep this from you. Oh? I'm not sure if he's talking directly to me or if he's reassuring himself. I expect it's the latter. I try to remain calm, and I truly am unsurprised that yet another person in this town has managed to refrain from divulging potentially valuable information. This sketch belongs to a girl named Aya Walker. He pushes away from the counter, putting distance between himself and the sash, eyeing it warily. And who exactly is Aya Walker? I really shouldn't say anymore. I would hate for any harm to come to you because of me. Was she, like, like, someone evil or something? Harm? Who would harm me over something as insignificant as a name? I'm growing increasingly more frustrated as the minutes pass by, and Ezra can tell. I know he's not stupid. If anything, he's too smart. I suppose he's just looking out for himself, but whatever knowledge he's retaining is clearly viable, and I must know. I think back to what Omen said only a few nights ago, about Finn visiting less, about Ezra being tired all the time. Is this connected somehow? Uh, you're safe. I take a cautious step forward, aware that with him being this emotional that I could very well startle him. I spread my hands, showing my palms in a gesture of peace as I approach. Ezra, I'll make sure you don't get punished. I- It's not that simple. I can see he's growing increasingly more frustrated, mostly likely with himself. I've always had the impression that Ezra is truly an honest man, so that whatever he's hiding, he must be doing so with good reason. I hope- She was a hunter. A general. Good one, too. Another of Lenara's finest. She'd only recently transferred here from a few towns over when she was arrested. Arrested? I'm trying to look too confused, but I can't help the way my eyes widen when he says that. Arrested? He nods. Hunters, especially if a general's rank, are verily thrown into the dungeons for minor transgressions. We are too valuable, so what did she do? I don't know why. Nobody outside the Enforcers does. I don't know what to do with this information. A young general being thrown into the dungeons is alarming, especially when there's no apparent reason. Treason? Murder? Unlawful torture? These are all things that I know hunters have been imprisoned for, but never without the public having full knowledge. Such events are not usually quiet ones. I'm assuming, like, uh, this is, this is my theory. I'm still on the theory that Harry is evil. I'm assuming, like, she discovered something evil about, like, Harry and maybe James? And she wanted to expose them, but Harry framed her and put her in the dungeon? I don't know, that might be a stretch, but that's just a theory I'm working with right now. We have families and friends. We saved lives. There must be something, somewhere that tells me why she was stripped of her title and thrown in a cell. I take the sash from the counter and tuck it back inside my coat. And Ezra keeps an, a close eye on the movement as it may jump out and bite him. Who is her enforcer? Ezra throws me that look again, the one where he looks sad and reluctant. Gus. 
Of course, because I don't have enough of my plate already. Of course, it's August. He quickly scrambles to add to his statement, clearly not wanting me to think ill of August. Only in the interim, while her transfer was processed, she and Piper hit it off quite quickly, but she was gone before she had a chance to thrive. I take a step toward the door, and Ezra nervously follows. Where are you going? He looks like he wants to reach out and stop me, but he thinks better of it. I'm going to clear my head before. I don't know. I reach to turn the locks, then for the handle, watching his ward shimmer and fade as he reluctantly waves his hand. Something begs me to pause. Tell me, why are you so afraid? I'm scared to learn the truth. I've only ever wanted to find somewhere to settle, somewhere quiet and away from the things that gave me nightmares. I found that here. I found love, a family, and, and yet... Love? You mean from a certain vampire with a prosthetic arm? Uh, uh? Nothing lasts forever? He shakes his head. Everything crumbles, eventually. That's why I'm afraid. I just want a normal life. Yeah, I don't blame you, dude. I would want that, too. I would love to bone with a very hot vampire. We stare each other down for a lingering moment, and I truly feel sorry for him, for everyone in this town. I assume that associating yourself with creatures doesn't grant you much peace? It does not. I drop my head, my mind swimming. People are dying of being thrown in dungeons. I've got your back, Ezra, just as long as you have mine. I thank you. Just stay safe. We need you. Chill air hits me as soon as I open the door of Ezra's shop and step outside. It hisses in my ears, piercing through my layers like it wants to chase me back indoors. I can think of no alternative more enticing, but my work is done here, and I need to move on. Not a moment, well, less time. It seems as I close the door and immediately notice a familiar face skulking out just out of my vision until now. Omen startles when he realizes that I've spotted him. He takes a full step away from me, one hand half raised, his tail lashing like a snake. For reasons I can't even begin to fathom, there's genuine fear on his face. Omen. Speak of the devil! Hey, I'm gonna say just in case, I don't know why I just have this sudden urge to say, but hey. First thought crossed to my mind as though he's suspiciously distraught. The second is that it pains me to see him that way. Maybe the distraction is in order. I try to catch Omen's eye and wink at him. Speak of the devil. I was wondering where you were. <laughs> my baby, look at his blushing face. Aww. Did I imagine that he stiffens at the words? It's hard to tell with how stiff he already is. It lasts only a second before his face turns red. Maybe redder than just a blush. Something flickers in Omen's eyes, like Ember is about to burst to life. He looks sideways too quickly for me to make sure. His aura churns, shifts, but it doesn't change. Oh, uh... Omen twists a strand of his hair around one finger and tugs at it, his tail twitching most anxiously, adorably. Omen cringes, rubbing at his cheek. After he left, things seemed to turn a bit chaotic, and I thought it was best I'd go away for a while. That was good thinking. Omen nods, his ears drooping. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, too. I was worried I scared you away after the moment we almost- Oh! Oh! Oh, the kiss! Right, right. I wave a hand vaguely over my shoulder, hoping that's a distraction off the docks. The almost kiss that August would have skinned me alive for. I don't give a fuck about what August says. I'm gonna smooch the demon and also the lichen. Now where's the lichen? We're gonna get him over here and we're all gonna smooch each other. Not that Omen seems to need directions. He's looking at his shoes, at the door to Ezra's shop, at my shoes, at something behind me, anything but my face. I'm- is Omen autistic coded? Cause he's not giving me eye contact and that's usually a sign of the tism. I don't know, I wouldn't really be surprised if like the characters in this game are uh, neurodivergent coded because they're already like LGBT and this uh, company puts a lot of thought into their games. No, you don't scare me off. I wasn't running away. I enjoyed our night together. You were very kind to spend it with me. I feel the same. <laughs> he laughs, it sounds startled and helpless, but even as he stifles it, a grin dances around the corners of his lips. It lasts for just a moment before he falls serious again. I'm looking for someone. Owen says this very quietly, like he's confessing a secret. He scans my face with eyes flickering red rather than the usual warm brown. I wait since there's a little uh, else I can say. Then something feels to resolve. Omen looks for me to Ezra's door, then takes a step back, his mouth tight. She's probably not in there. I should get going. It's nice seeing you again. She? You mean, uh, Piper? He makes a turn away, and I don't know what moves me to act. Perhaps it's his aura, the way I suddenly sense it swell under his glamour, and spot the wisps of flame trailing from his hair in the tip of his ears. 
Perhaps he's walking away and I simply can't let him go right now. Perhaps I'm tired of one more fucking mystery in this town. I the way, I reach out and grab his wrist. Wait! And instantly regret it. Oh! He'd scorched my hand, forced me to withdraw with a small cry. Oh! Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. Oman looks over his shoulder at me with glowing amber eyes, his lips drawn back in a half-snarl. His still eerily human face is framed by a wreath of fire. My guts clench, twists drop under the sudden glimpse of an immense, blistering presence that sprung out of nowhere. My instincts scream at me in warning. Demon. Then Oman jerks back at the thought of a trance. And everything in extinguishes. I don't know how long we stayed on sight as we're shot with the space of a sword swing between us. Omen's arms are limp by his sides, making no move to defend himself. All he does is stare at me. Stare at me with huge eyes and palpable horror. I'm sorry. No, baby, it's okay. I was the one that grabbed you without warning. It's okay. That's my fault. I'm so sorry. I force my mouth open to tell him it's alright. I've had worse, really, but I can only pry my jaw apart. The words, I can't force through. My baby... He's not waiting to hear them. He's stepping away. One, then two, then three, and he turns around and flees. I can't move my legs to follow. By the time I get enough control of myself back, Omen's already long gone. In hindsight, I'm glad I couldn't follow him. It takes a tremendous effort for me to pry my stiff fingers from the comfort of my weapon. What have I done? I've been sitting in my room at the wolf, waiting for the sun to set, waiting for darkness to fall so I can carry out my next move. No messenger had come to summon me to headquarters, and neither had August come to bang up down on my door. I gathered the identification of the deceased hunter is taking a little longer than expected. Or, many dark things crossed my mind, but I pushed them away. I meant it when I said that I'm tired of being pushed from pillar to post, kept in the dark. Enough is enough. If this town wants saving, then I'll do it on my terms. I have a bad feeling about this. The door to August's office is thankfully unlocked, and I'm pleased to discover that it's empty. The desk is in its usual disarray, papers and books have passively strewn across its surface. I take a deep breath and head straight for the filing cabinet I've seen August rummaging through so often, and I carefully open the drawers. Apparently Piper has her own, a whole portion dedicated to her reports, an impressive feat! After much rummaging, I eventually find I.S. papers stuffed at the very back of the bottom drawer. If I didn't know what I was looking for, they'd have easily gone unnoticed. It certainly looks like August has tried to hide them, which only increases my suspicion. I find her transfer papers, a glowing letter of recommendation from her previous enforcer. Her records are clean with no discrepancies, nothing but praise. I see the words kind and doubtful repeated multiple times, and the only complaint, if you can call it that, that her enforcer has is that she was overly cautious. Then I find it. Her discharge papers. An obnoxious red treason stamped across the front page. Oh, so it was treason. But I'm guessing she was framed. I don't know. Again, that's just a, a long cause. In the blink of an eye, the whole office lights up and the door loudly slams against the wall. Oh! Ah! I'm in danger! What are you doing? Uh. Business? I watch magic coat every surface blowing and curling over the walls, floor, furniture, and even creeps over their clothing, their skin too. They stare at me wide eyed, vivid violets swallowing the once ice blue of their irises, and though I should be concerned what I have been caught, I'm distracted. August. The magic that glimmers upon their clothing disappears and their eyes lose that outworthy glow, but their room remains alight. They look at the bundle of papers that I hold tightly in my hand, a frown furrowing their brow. I would ask that you put those back, Hunter. Uh, no, heart emoji. Their words are eerily calm, and they seem more concerned than annoyed. What happened to her? They close the door, clicking the lock and checking the handle before they walk towards me. As poised and perfect as ever, they stare me down. You know, not even Piper found those. But I hate to admit that I'm impressed. Thank you, General. Now tell me what the fuck happened with her. August. They unfurl their fingers in a silencing gesture and I pause. August is still my superior officer and I'm nothing if not respectful. I do not wish for Piper to be demoted, nor do I wish for you to meet the same fate, but I appear to be having a case of deja vu. But... You know, sometimes the hand that feeds is a forceful one. I'm perplexed. I click to the much harsher conversation. August isn't exactly known for their calm temperament, and this is startlingly out of character. Aren't you going to admonish me? With a slight smile, they shake their head. No, Yui, I'm not. I believe in you, strangely. 
I believe that you were bright light at the end of a very, very dark tunnel for this town. And I have been questioning things lately. Oh, so you're on my side. I have questions for you. I just want the truth. Uh, I have questions for you. I can't help but scoff at that statement. I stand here with a piece of paper in my hands that has apparently condemned a woman to life in a dungeon, and yet there's no explanation for that. No one knows why, and people are afraid to talk to her. What's going on? They clenched her fist. If I told you that I do not know, would you believe me? No. I contemplate that question carefully. Would I? Do I? At this moment, no, I don't. The answer I hope for. If you trust me right now, then you'd be nothing but a fool. But truly, I don't know why. I assure you I'm not lying, but you can't decide that on your own. Something in my gut tells me that this is all really connected, and this doesn't exactly comfort me. The very institution that I work for, that I've dedicated my life to, I moved to pull out the sash and let it unfurl, holding it out before them, and August's eyes grow wide. Who does this belong to? I, Walker. The expression is unchanging. I see. It's bloodied. I nod, handing it to them. They carefully lay it across their palms, studying it intently. Heavily and torn to shreds, whatever happened if she put up a fight? They frown, their lips pursed. Something is clearly perplexing them. She was not reported to be injured upon her arrest. That much I do know. Something like that wouldn't be omitted. Hmm. I throw them a sorry state, wondering how they could be uh, so sure of such things. You're positive the blood is hers. I want to tell them how I knew, but I can't implicate Ezra or Alcar. Not after they were both so clearly terrified. I'm sure, and I'm going to need you to trust me on that. <sighs> Strangely, they don't question it. Instead, they sigh, placing the sash upon their desk. Okay, good, because I'm trying to fuck Alcar, and I love Ezra too much, and he does not deserve like anything bad happening to him. She was yours, August. Do you want to know what happened to her? I want to see her, to visit the dungeon. They glance out of the window, and another heavy snowfall coats the icy street outside. I think you need to take a seat. I have a few confessions. Oh? I can hear the rush of my blood pounding in my skull as I take a seat, my heart trying to escape the restrictive cage of my ribs as I stare my enforcer down. August's fingers are visibly trembling. All colors have drained from their skin, and I'm fearful that they might faint. They draw in a shuddering breath and reach for one of the drawers in her desk, pulling out a vial that glows a vivid lavender. I recognize it from the very first time I met them back in Ezra's shop, which strangely feels like forever ago. The way they demanded it from him was with a desperation that I'd seen in them since, but it stuck with me nonetheless. At first, I think they might pop the cork and swallow it whole, their eyes hungry as they shake it, watching the viscous liquid swell and brighten. They don't, though. Instead, they place it in the middle of the desk. They proceed to sit on their hands and gather it that it's a precautionary measure to prevent themselves from indulging. What is this? They cleared their throat, unable to meet my concerned gaze. This is what I've been reduced to. Ezra gave this to you? They nod and they reach for the vial. They watch intently, their throat bobbing as they, as they swallow thickly. Whoa! The room flares to life as I pop the cork, and August shifts in their seat. It smells fragrant, almost citrusy, but certainly not as unpleasant as I anticipated, but it's very pretty now, like prettier than before. It is not harmful if used as intended. Ezra would never... It could never create such things. He is not interested in enabling me, but I may have pressured him. What is this, a drug? I may have taken advantage of it, hence the nature in which my magic has been manifesting lately. Just another thing to add to the long list of regrets I seem to have accrued lately. So what, does this like increase like your magic abilities? I look around the room, now understanding how such a display is possible. What does it do exactly? I can feel a crackle in, in the air, an obvious shift in the tension. My magic draws from the mind, and when using it often, I tend to grow weary faster than most. It's a weakness I'm not proud of, and I cannot be viewed to be weak when in such a position in this agency. So, does this potion, like, keep you awake? Like, give you energy? They gesture towards the vial, and I lay it back upon the desk. Therefore, this affords me the ability to replenish my mana, to put myself to use whenever required. Oh, okay. So it just recharges you, basically. Psionic abilities such as my own are rare, so I am required quite often. There are quite obviously side effects, though. Your health is more important than your notoriety, August. You seem taken aback by that statement, maybe even a little embarrassed. 
Yes, and I see that now. I've been a little blinded by the desire to impress. But the harder I look, the more I realize that I might be pushing myself to the limit for a broken cause. I blanch at that. Those words coming from August's mouth seem unreal. It's a casually honest statement, painfully honest even, and certainly not sh something I can imagine the enforcer I met just a week ago daring to utter. Too many questionable things have happened right under my nose. And I was too blinded by my determination to succeed to see. Aya, Piper, the murderers. We need to go back to the start. Examine the root. The root being the agency, the enforcers? With a small nod, they lift their eyes to the ceiling, speaking their next words with great effort. Yes, the enforcers. Then why bring me here? That I cannot answer. I wish I could. Um... Wow, I have a lot of save slots here. I'm gonna save here. Ask about Aya. Tell me about Aya. They rest their elbows upon the desk, steepling their fingers. There's not much to tell, really. She transferred here only a few months ago. We'd barely become acquainted when she was arrested, though. Piper took a liking to her. A small smile crosses their lips. They worked well together, and I finally got to catch up on the ridiculous amount of paperwork I accrued during my time spent in the field with Piper. Why were you in the field? Well, things have been a little busier than usual here in Lunaris lately. Creature activity has been at an all-time high these past few years, and Piper and I make... made an unstoppable team. I can't believe that for a moment, for any peak in activity is usually for a reason. It's been worse the last few years, not always as bad? We shake their head. Not always, but it almost seems normal now. I make a mental note to remember this to pry later. So her arrest, one day she was just gone. No explanation? It was reported that she went on an unsanctioned hunt. I wasn't aware, and neither was Piper. We never saw her again. I reached for the papers that sit upon the desk in between us. Harry's signature is clear as day. You didn't question it? An uncomfortable shift, a squirm of must, almost. I did not. You don't question Harry. He's giving me no reason to. Really? Not even when he looks evil as fuck? I was already right about him being gay, so I'm 99.9% .9 sure that he is also evil. Something isn't right here, and I's situation feels too convenient to me. Don't you agree? With a sharp inhale, they sit back in their chair. A little of their tension seems to melt away, but the sadness still lingers. I do. Oh, okay, so I can just... Yeah. Ask about Piper. Imagine that you didn't want Piper to be demoted, so what happened? Your gaze flickers to the side, staring out the window at the snowy street. After Aya's arrest, Piper became unsettled. Rightfully so, now I look back. Oh, she got too close. She wouldn't stop rambling about a theory she had about the agency. Corruption, slander, all nonsense to me at the time. She was caught trying to break into the dungeons and rifling through my files. Just like you were this evening. Ah, I see, I see. I think I, I mentioned like last stream, like I, that I think that this like agency is kind of corrupt, and I would not be surprised if I was if I was right. I clear my throat, offering them an apologetic grin. I was too infuriated to truly think straight, and before I get the chance to defuse the situation, Harry caught wind. I regret the way I dealt with it. Piper was a good friend before this mess began. I should have helped her. I let her down. Your gaze meets mine, and they somehow seem more concerned for me than they are for themselves. You and Piper, you were friends? Hard to believe now, I know. But yes, we were. Close enough for her to convince me to arm wrestle her. They absentmindedly rubbed their elbow as if nursing an old injury. Yeah, I, I can, like, see, like, Piper beating your ass. Like, she's a fucking queen. Don't do that. Ever. Noted. I can't beat anybody in an arm wrestle. Like, literally. Children could beat me in an arm wrestle. The way they light up when they talk about such memories doesn't go unnoticed, and I feel a pang of sorrow for their lost friendship. They both seem like they could do with such company in their lives, and now I understand why they've noted as being so prolific as a team. You should speak to her, and clear the air. The look they throw at me is less than convincing. Piper is a proud person. She's been wronged by someone she trusted, and she does not trust freely. I wouldn't expect her to forgive me without much begging, but... I shall try. If you gotta get on your uh, hands, knees, and beg, then do it. I truly vowed her friendship, and I have been cruel to her in my mission to please Harry. That ends now. 
August pushes away from their desk, swiping the still glowing vial as they stand. They cradle gently in their palm before it, it's shoved firmly into the drawer from where it came. What's next? What can we do? I think you should speak to Piper. She might know more than me, especially after her snooping. I stand too, my touch lingering upon those discharge papers. I want to go into the dungeons. I want to see her. They avert their gaze, cheeks rosy, their frustration evident. I cannot authorize that. Not when I know it would put your position in jeopardy. They thoughtlessly slide their hand across the back of their chair, cutting me a sympathetic stare. I can't have a repeat of what happened with Piper, Yui. Uh, trust me? I try my best to stop my own frustration showing. Please, August, I need you to trust me here. What if I can find a way to get down there undetected? A way neither of us will be implicated. Interested, obviously, piqued. They raise a dark brow at me. And how exactly do you propose to do that? With all due respect, Hunter Nyanpasu, you don't know the dungeons here. You're right, but... I smile and they narrow their eyes at the change in expression. What do you have up your sleeve? Well, I happen to know a few people who can certainly be of use to us. I'm not sure you're going to like it, though. Oh, Finn? Go on. You may not approve, but we have a few eyes that probably know the dungeons better than any hunter or enforcer ever could. The dramatic and sudden roll of their eyes tells me they know exactly who I'm talking about. You want to enlist a bunch of vampires to help us break into the enforcement dungeons? Yes. And I was right. I knew we were going to trust Finn. Not a bunch, just the one. Finn has lived in this town longer than literally anyone. <sighs> August scoffs loudly. Lived. He's as dead as a doornail. Well, he's more alive than you! So you're just going to walk into the dungeons, Kazimar in tow, and hope not to get caught? Uh, yes? I smell out their obvious distaste for my plan. Ezra, Piper, even Alcard. They can all help too. Do I have your permission to proceed? A pregnant pause follows my question, but eventually August meets my gaze once more. You have my permission. But please be cautious. I am no wiser than you here, and I cannot protect you if something goes wrong. I came here to make something of myself. I was so desperate to move out of the shadows of my parents. I come from a family that held me to such high standards. Standards I could never dream of meeting, no matter how hard I tried. The words grew terser as the seconds passed, unraveling gradually. I don't want this to be my legacy. I want to make the world a better place, not a scarier one. I gather that. August has suffered through many frustrations, and life has weathered them to the bone. They quickly gather themselves. I won't let you down. I don't doubt that, actually. I head back to my room at the Wolf to clear my head, and to try and figure out my hastily concocted plan a little more thoughtfully. I stay up pondering the fact that we still haven't been given the name of the latest victim, and I wonder if Harry is keeping it from me for a reason. After my conversation with August, everything feels wrong. A quick, sharp pain rises in my temples. I feel that familiar presence lurking. Despite that, it would appear that no voices will visit me tonight. Yippee! I'm not having a moment! Because apparently nothing is sacred in this town, I managed to coax Piper's address out of Edna with very little persuasion. I head across the streets, unsurprised that she lives so close to the tavern, and as far away from headquarters as possible. Her house is small, but appears to have character, much like its owner. I take a deep breath and I knock. She looks surprised to see me, but her expression quickly softens. I wasn't expecting you, especially because I assumed you had no bloody idea where I live. Are you okay? A timid smile crosses my lips. I definitely don't think there's a conversation to be had in the street. Can we talk? Oh, sorry, of course, come in. Oh, I like it. Very homey, very comfy. I like all the knives hanging around the house. I love it. Nice touch of detail. Her house is warm and inviting. The walls adorned with an abundance of gorgeous weaponry and various plants and brightly colored pillows litter the room. Your home is beautiful. Thank you. I've been lucky, really. I know not all hunters catch a break like I have. Plus, real estate in this shithole is cheap. We share a laugh, but I can't help but feel a sense of urgency discuss things with her. I decide now is not the time for pleasantries or stalling. Cutting straight to the chase is the only way. I have some news about Aya. Her eyes widen, looking to the side away from me. Aya? Please don't say what I think you're going to. I pull the staff from inside my coat and present it to her, but I'm quick to reassure. This was found in the woods, but that doesn't mean... She could still be alive, Piper. This is clearly out there for a while. She reaches out and runs her hand over the ruined fabric, her fingers shaking. 
With a deep inhale, she withdraws, turning to sit upon the arm of her sofa. Why are you here? She looks so sad, like she's only thinking the worst. I don't blame her, and I can't imagine how frustrated she must feel with the hand she's been dealt. I want you to know that I spoke to August last night. They were quite honest with me about everything, really. Oh, they were, hmm? I suppose they told you why I was demoted. I acted without rational thought. I was so angry. I offer her a smile, trying to catch her gaze. I may or may not have been caught doing exactly as you did. You didn't. I nod, feeling a little smug now that the fear of being reprimanded by my enforcer has dissipated. I broke into Augustus Willenheim's office, and I lived to tell the tale. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. You've got guts. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit of a bad bitch. I don't know if you can tell. I shrug, brushing it off. I'm grateful that the mood has shifted to something that feels a little lighter. You know, August regrets how everything happened. They seemed wistful. I think they missed her friendship. She frowns deeply, fiddling with the edge of her tunic. They hurt me. I think it'll take me a while to get over that. It wasn't even about the punishment. It was that they didn't believe me. You work with someone for all that time, but when it came down to it, they thought I'd gone mad. Why would I make up such a thing? Everyone jokes about us and our instincts, but they don't understand. When we feel something, we really feel it, you know? I nod because I do know. Whatever lies within us that grants us our abilities is something we cannot shake or ignore. If we sense something is in our pain or they're scared, we feel it in kind. If we love, we love fully. If we can feel that something feels off, it usually is. They employ us to do what we do for a reason. I wish they'd have a better understanding of what or how we feel. <sighs> she scoffs a quiet laugh, rolling her eyes and offering me a small smile. If only. If August wishes to make amends, I welcome their apology. But it will take me a while to trust them again. I was humiliated and betrayed by one of my only friends. They got some begging to do. Uh, yeah, I knew that there was going to be some begging. Don't worry, they'll be on their hands and knees soon. Now that, I'd like to see. <laughs> Shit, me too. I'll get you a front row seat if that ever happens, alright? Alright, bet queen, bet. Deal. Now I have a proposition. Oh? We're going into the dungeons! I want you to go into the dungeons. She stares at me blank expressionless. You fucking what? Are you absolutely mad? Fancying a demotion too, are you? Well, let me tell you. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Listen, I may be mad, but I'm not insane. I throw her a look and she smirks. You're serious, then? Well, little Yui, I'm impressed. So come on, then. What's this plan? I'm still putting the pieces together. You inspired me, though. Good to know some good comes out of my suffering, I suppose. Do you have any tips? Any kinks you encountered on your journey? Ayo, kinks. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw kinks and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know I had to do it to him. There are wards, there are guards. It's pretty impossible unless... Unless? Well, you know Ezra, don't you? That witch is more than a pretty face. Speak to him and see if you can convince him to help. She's right. I've seen him use wards in his shop. And from what I saw of his magic the other day... You're a genius. She shrugs as if that's the most obvious statement I could have made. Duh. When you're ready, you know I've got your back. Always. Upon entering the shop, I found chaos. I spot Ezra frantically gesturing at Omen, the demon's tail tightly coiled. I'm wary of approaching him after a little incident yesterday, so I'm choosing to observe from afar. I manage to catch Ezra's eyes, and he throws me a sympathetic look. He's stressed, his hands full of bandages and potions. What happened? Is my baby boy hurt? He mutters something quick and sharp under his breath to Omen. He then turns and stares at me with wide, starry eyes as the witch disappears through his purple curtain. If I ask what's going on, will you give me an answer? I... The question seems to catch him by surprise, and he looks away. His lips purse. He doesn't seem to have forgotten his outburst from yesterday or his abrupt departure. Good. It isn't my intention to trip him with the reminder, but just as well as he remembers. Did you bring someone in who was hurt? Brown eyes snap at me almost instantly, and Omen moves as to step in between me and the entrance to Ezra's back room, then catches himself in the middle and forcefully drops his arms to the side. He opens his mouth, stammers without speaking, then his shoulders droop in defeat. A little spark that might have caught on the bandage rolls and his hand peters out. Yes, but maybe you shouldn't see her right now. I mean... He licks his lips, a flick of his black tongue visible. It seems so eerily out of place on a face so painfully human in its distress. At least let Ezra see to her first. He needs some space when he works his magic. It's gonna be the cat, isn't it? 
I'm sure our guest is all right. I haven't seen Omen this nervous before. In the admittedly brief time we've known each other, and his fear sets me on edge. Carefully in delivery not to spook him, yesterday's almost burn is still fresh in my mind. I step forward and put a hand on him, on his arm, squeezing it gently. He's gonna be talking about the cat. I, I feel like the her is the cat. I'm sure I guess he'll be all right. Ezra's tending to them after all. Omen blinks at me, then smiles and leans into my touch, visibly relaxing. He's a beacon of warmth in the cold room. His power is wound tight to its core. I feel it under the glamour and the convincing illusion of fabric under my arm, but he won't let it loose. Won't let it hurt me. Yes, you're right. Whoever they are? Despite my gentle prod, he still presses his lips tightly together. For a moment, I fear I may have caused him to clamp down again after all, but he takes a deep breath and, f and very gently shakes me off. Another deep breath. Omen is stealing himself for something. I can see it. I decide to back off as well, giving him some space. Shoots me a glance and hugs the items he is holding closer. When he speaks again, his voice is very soft. Hunter Neon Pasu, no, Yui, I have something I must tell you. I'm listening. Omen smiles, though it's brief and weak, and also quick to disappear like candlelight in a storm. His eyes lose focus as he begins to speak. Two years ago, I came to Lunaris. That is, I came to stay in Lunaris. After a disagreement with my sire, my father. Oh? His eyes flicker around the room almost nervously, and I find myself straining to detect any eavesdropping presence, but there is none. Omen seems to find the same thing because his shoulders droop again. You know what I am. I suppose you've already guessed. Demon? He sighs. Your people call him Lucifer, I think. The fallen divine. The lord of hells. Oh shit! Your father is fucking Lucifer? It takes me a moment to process what he's dead. Demon lore is plentiful and easily accessible when you're a hunter. Even in our early years at the academy, we poured our detailed logs of their fiendish hierarchies, favorite vices to exploit patterns of their appearance. I would damn well hope I know who the lord of hell is. Oh, that is very nice. Omen's brown eyes widen, his jaw going slack in surprise. The glamour truly is something, and I'm starting to wonder if he learned from it from the witch behind the curtains. It is? He coughs. That was sarcasm, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, see, I told you he's autistic. That was not sarcasm. No, it was not. Yes, no, it was not. Something else also hits me. Our sire? Omen bites his lip and looks away. He nods curtly, eyes flicking to the door leading into the shop. Well then, does your father know that you're here in the mortal rim? Can he find you? A terrible thought crosses my mind. The burned bodies the hunters targeted? No. The vehemence of his denial is startling. I quickly hold up my hands for peace, but Omen isn't paying attention. He's shaking his head vigorously, trembling. No. No, that can't be him. Him or any of his minions. I would have known. I would have stopped them. His brown eyes are glowing with fire as he stares at me pleadingly, literal simmering flames. I can feel the fire in his core standing here, far enough away, and now I know where it comes from the familiarity making sense. That's one hell of a secret to hold on to, and who is that in the back then? Still, this demon right here in front of me, so nervous and so afraid, I might hate him and so achingly endearing takes priority. Thank you for telling me. Thank me? And not slowly, hoping to see how serious I'm being. This is no small secret to trust a stranger with. I smile. But then again, we aren't strangers, are we? There is a pause. And then Omen smiles as well. Why genuine and so very relieved that I want to come to him. Give him a hug, anything. Yes, you're right, thank you. Omen closes his eyes and says something too quiet for me to hear. And he breathes in, breathes out, and slowly makes his way to the counter. He sets all the items in his arms down there. With such deliberation, I know he is doing so to calm his nerves. Something sneaks through still. I see a flicker of flame about his hair and intensity to his aura. But only briefly, the pressure fades as Omen raises his head. He doesn't look at me as he speaks. I think I'll just head outside for some fresh air. Are you sure? Omen smiles at me over his shoulder, the curve of his mouth tense. I think it's for the best. I don't want her to see me like this, rattled and angry. She's my sister. She doesn't deserve it. Oh, your sister! Oh! I thought it was the cat. He trails off, staring off into the distance for a moment. Then he shakes his head and makes for the door, only adding one last thing before he steps outside. Will you go and say hello to her? 
I'm sure Elaine will find you quite lovely. Uh, sure. Oh, that's her! Oh, she's cute. The second I laid my eyes on her, it's more than a little obvious that she truly is related to Omen. Maybe even his twin, unless the glamour is simply fooling me. Ezra has a poultice carefully pressed to her dainty hand. A pile of gauze covered in a thick black ink ecolor discarded upon the counter by his side. She blinks at me once, twice. Her eyes are as big and brown, and every bit as earnest as Omen's. Hello. Her voice is astoundingly sweet, almost musical even. I smiled her politely, looking to see Ezra for a little guidance. Elaine, this is Yui. Yui, this is Elaine, Omen's twin sister. Ah, yes. I assume Ezra is just as unaware of her existence as I am, but he's polite enough to stay calm and focused, as friendly and as hospitable as ever. It's nice to meet you, Elaine. Oh, um, you too. Elaine narrows her eyes to me for a brief moment, shaking her head. She looks terrified. She dresses Ezra, but she certainly keeps her eyes on me, on my weapon. I... Where is Armoros? I look at Ezra, my confusion quite evident. Armoros? Ah, yes, that... Her face lights up when I say his name. I gather that she doesn't fully understand my trepidation. Ezra turns to address the demon, patting her head gently. He's just outside, and you're all healed up, but I do think you should go and see your brother now. Okay, yes, yes, I should. Ezra releases her, throwing me a sorry look over his shoulder as he turns to quickly dispose of the mess of medical supplies. It was lovely to meet you, Yui. Her demeanor is delightful, and I'm still slowly processing exactly where her brother just told me. Yes, you too. She glanced at me briefly before shyly averting her gaze, turning to meekly part the curtains that lead into the shop. Oh, Armoros! That's the, uh, that guy, I think, right? Yeah, he's one of the twins! The second she's gone, a tall, pale figure bursts through the back door. He looks shocked to see me, but quickly recovers. Is she healed? She's fine, and she's with her brother. I suggest you give them space for the time being. Ezra's words are final and somewhat stern, and Armaros quickly wilts under his vibrant green gaze, his eyes still lightly glowing from whatever magic he's just performed. I don't really know how to unpack all this. What happened to her, and why are you so desperate to be by her side? He stares longingly at the curtain, Elaine's voice quiet on the other side. Then I remember the note on the step of the Ibeck, the little heart. It says Hyla. Ah, well, I'm courting her, you see. Oh, you're dating her! Oh! Honestly, I can kind of see it. I kind of ship it, not gonna lie. The twin dating the twin. Love to see it. We're t together. She's attacked last night by it. The one that's been getting to your kind, I think. Ezra and I share a look, doing little to hide our shock. It as in the creature? Armoris closes his eyes, sighing heavily, then he nods. Yes. If you need to tell us something, we can help. Elaine didn't need to get hurt, so if you know where this thing is... He looks at me, then back at Ezra, his throat bobbing as he swallows thickly. He's quite clearly battling the idea of divulging any more information. Uh, I'm gonna save here. Encourage him. Armoris, it's okay. You can trust us. We just want to help. She's right. No one will know what you tell us. We just want people to be safe. He sighs again, his shoulders sinking in defeat. I just want her to be safe. We can see you care for her a great deal, and we want that too. His ice blue eyes quickly flicker between each of us, and it's almost animated I've seen him. Why are you being so nice to me? My sister and I... He trails off, almost looking right through me. If you have information about the creature, we need to know. People are dying. So, I find it hard to hold your beliefs against you if you can offer assistance. Very well. Aurora has been sneaking out at night as of late. That's not exactly uncommon for her, but I believe she's doing more than satisfying her baser urges. Ezra looks away, covering a, a quiet cough with his hand. We don't have time to unpack all of that, but I'll throw it away for later. What do you suspect? I suspect nothing. I know that she's feeding it, or something at least. Feeding it? Mm-hmm. He seems unfazed, staring startlingly so. She may seem cruel and cold, but Aurora has a good heart. She cares for the creatures that, and makes sure that they're safe. Can I see Elaine now? Can you maybe elaborate a little more on that first? He shrugs, sighing again. It is what it is. I don't dictate to her what she can and cannot do. I find myself losing interest in our preachings. I just want to keep Elaine safe now. Ideally, we'll leave this wretched place for good, but... Her and Omen have only just reunited. Would you be so quick to leave him? Maybe not. I think it's best for both of you to stay here and lay low. 
I'm not sure why the creature attacked her. It hasn't attacked anything inhuman so far. He looks at me, fixes my gaze, and with perfect confidence. How do you know? A chill rolls down my spine, but I shake it off. You're right. I don't. I'd really like to leave now. You can leave, but I need you to promise me something. He narrows his gaze. Go on. Watch Aurora, and the second you see her do anything out of the ordinary, you find me. I will ensure Elaine is safe, I swear to you, but your cooperation is essential. I see Ezra shifting nervously out of the corner of my eyes, but I stand my ground. Armora is continuing to assess me. Fine, I will seek you out, but I will watch my sister. Farewell, Hunter. Which? Well, that was interesting. Yeah, no shit! I anticipate some commotion from behind the curtains, but I hear nothing but silence. Interesting is putting it lightly. How are you, anyway? I have a quick laugh, because that question feels far too casual for the amount of information I've digested in the last... forever. Tired, confused, the usual. Oh, me too, bitch. Me too. Oh wait, why am I saying me too to me? That's literally just me! I suppose I haven't done much to help with that, have I? I wanted to apologize for not being totally honest with you, and for making your life a little harder than necessary. You already have so much on your plate. He seems genuine, and aside from his odd behavior yesterday, I have no reason not to trust Ezra. I spoke to August last night and Piper this morning. They know about the sash. Fear flashes across his features, but I quickly reassure him. It's fine, Ezra. They're on our side. They want the help. Even Gus? Yes, even August. Are you sure you're not magic? Because that seems like an impossible task. I shake my head profusely. No magic here. His smile grows, and he seems to relax exponentially. It's nice to see. Then let's talk. He takes a deep breath. The reason I was so hesitant to discuss Aya, or the Enforcers for that matter, is because I used to work for them. Oh, I see. I guess that would explain why uh, you and, and August have that like tense relationship. You're an Enforcer? Hell no. I went in and I assisted in the infirmary or morgue whenever they needed an extra pair of hands. Healers, good healers, are few and far between around here. Yeah, I can't really see you as a fighter. I'm sorry, my dude. It's what I always wanted to do, to apply my skills where most needed. Helping those who dedicate their lives to ensuring our safety was an honor. The murders began, and I examined the first body. I can even call it that in the state that it was in. I listen intently, taking all this in, a little perplexed, a little caught off guard. Something shifted within the headquarters after that. They started treating me differently, they called me in less. And then, when I was there, they kept me clear of any hunters. It became quite clear they didn't want me there any longer. Information was being kept from me, important notes about the victims I was supposed to be examining. The Aya incident happened. Then another dead hunter turned up, and they revoked my access. They took away all my notes. Notes? He nods, glanced over at the kitchen counter. I may have had Piper retrieve them for me. If you'd like to take them, there is not much. Well, you're welcome to them. Uh, I'm gonna, just in case, save. Yeah, I'm gonna take the notes. Yes, I'll take them. He opens one of the kitchen drawers, pulling out a pile of parchment. Then he discards what looks like a fake wooden button. The notebook is nestled safely beneath it. Here. I took it away inside my jacket for later. So why were you so afraid to tell me this? You did nothing wrong. You were helping people. I got the achievement. Took Ezra's notes. Uh, I don't know what that's gonna do, but I guess we'll see. He offers me a sorry gaze, his brow furrowed, fingers curled into a fist at his side. They don't like people talking about it. About the deaths. Many of us have our suspicions now, and they know. I think they'd do anything to keep what's happening quiet. Like not telling me who the latest victim is? Exactly. I wasn't even sure if I could trust Gus, but I wanted to so badly that I pushed my apprehension aside. Oh, and God damn it, Cinder! <sighs> I smile and Ezra's expression lights up. You have a plan? I have a plan. I need your help. I'm going to need your help, along with a few of the others. Anything you need, I'm your guy. Well, magic-wise, anyway. <laughs> we share a laugh, and Ezra definitely seems more relaxed now, like a weight has been lifted off his shoulders. Piper and I are going into the dungeon to see if we can locate Aya. If we can talk to her, I think we might have a start. Everything leads back to when she was arrested, as far as I can tell. How on earth are we going to get down there without being caught? 
That's where you come in. It may involve you and August working together. Does Gus know about this little plan of yours? I grimace, waving my hand in a so-so gesture. Partially? You're lucky I trust you. And I'm here for you. Just tell me when and where. Thank you, Ezra. Now how can I find Finn? Why, a secret passageway, of course. You're in the right place. Ben's now kicking inside a colorful rug to reveal that hidden patch. The creek slotted when he opened it. A gust of cold, stale wind rising from its depths. Walk for about ten minutes, and then when you see candlelight, it's the third door on the left. Don't be alarmed by any vampires you stumble across. They're all friendly. Alright, gotcha. Noted. I'm not taking a deep breath. I lower myself into the hatch, gazing up at him with a smile. See you around. Alright, let's go vampire hunting! The assistant drip, drip, drip of water guides me forward through the darkness. The stench of damp and decay fills my nostrils as I sink deeper into the corridors of the catacombs. The pitch black path is long and winding, and the only sound I can hear is the tap of my boots on the wet stone. Eventually, I can see candlelight flickering ahead, and it appears that I have finally found life. Well, kind of. I remember to look for the third door on the left, just as Ezra had instructed. As I approach, I find it wide open. Ooh, fancy, fancy! I like the whole like black and gold thing he's got going on here. I peek inside, and the stark contrast between the literal tome outside and what I find, what is most definitely Finn's quarters, is astounding. Before I get the chance to take into view, a cool breeze brushes past me, ruffling my hair and sending me goose flesh prickling across my skin. Oh, goth chick, hello, vampire goth chick, hello. A small, darkly clad girl appears before me in a flash. Her eyes eve the brightest crimson as they bore into me. She stands with her head tilted in a toothy grin crossing dark lips. Are you lost, human? She stares me down, wide-eyed and quite clearly trying to imitate me, but she seems playful. I'm here to see Finn. She relaxes at the sound of his name, and her striking gaze sweeps over me like a caress. She shrugs, pursing her lips. So you're the one he won't shut up about, huh? Well, you do smell good, I guess. Um... Thank you? Smell good? I'm... Is Finn here? She looks a fan, and I notice how similar some of her more human quirks are to his. She's far less poisoned him, but I almost feel like that may be on purpose. I'm in Finn's territory here. Neutral territory, so I quell the desire to be defensive, even though her eyes are the color of a creature who drinks human blood. He's somewhere here, around, doing stuff. Helpful. Her smile winds and she turns to poke at a crystal decanter of whiskey that sits nestled in the corner of one of his many bookcases. Are you part of the clan? A quick nod, almost too quick to catch. I am. She pours the rich amber liquid into a glass, rolls it, sniffs it with a dramatic grimace, then sets it aside untouched. Her nose is still crinkled and barely disguised disgust when she looks at me again. I wish that thing that you're looking for would stop killing hunters, you know, because that means the more of your type will come. Them more enforces, which is the last thing we need in this shitty town. I hear footsteps, loud ones that echo off the stone walk into the hallway. Yui. I expect he knew I was here, but his shock is charming nonetheless. Once again, titties. He looks at the girl, who throws him a decidedly wicked wolfish grin, the picture of innocence. Raven, are you being nice? The girl, Raven, shrugs, siding up to him and resting her head on his shoulders. She rolls her eyes hard enough that I'm surprised that they don't fall back into her skull. Of course the goth bitch is named Raven. Why am I not surprised? Yes, dad. Listen, I know he's daddy, but he better not be an actual dilf. Finn's face drops, his eyes narrowed. I get the impression that if he could blush, his cheeks would be the prettiest shade of pink. I stifle a laugh, and with an obvious delight, Raven notices. Raven. She laughs, the sound loud and obnoxious, but still somehow charming. She shoves him playfully, but Finn remains stern. Are you going to introduce me to your friend? The suggestive wag over eyebrows doesn't go unnoticed, and Finn sighs heavily, offering me an apologetic smile. You mean this is Raven, she's my- I'm his kid. Oh! So he is an actual dill. He's an actual daddy. Well, I dodged a bullet there. After Ramon from Repurpose, I am done with dilfs. There's a little exaggerated rumble of a warning in Finn's throat, and I find myself enjoying the way he bristles in her presence. Finn throws her a death glare, and she proceeds to look guilty, but just a little. He raises a single dark brow at her, and after a quiet scoff, she enthusiastically steps forward and offers me her hand. 
It's really nice to meet you, Yui. You being in town has given Grumpy Pants here something to do other than mope, at least. I do not mope. Raven rolls her eyes, and I finally take her hand. Her grip is firm, and I wonder if she might be trying to unnerve me when, when her startling eyes widen exponentially. Hurt him, and I'll eat you. Got it? I open my mouth to respond, but before I get the chance, she's laughing again. Finn looks mortified, and he carefully pries her hand from mine and ushers her towards the door. It's time for you to go, I think. Raven pouts, raising both her hands in defense. I was joking, obviously. I like her already. She offers me a little wave and rises onto her tippy toes to press a kiss on Finn's cheek. He looks at her with unabashed fondness, a small smile creeping onto his lips. Go say hey to little Lux for me and be good. He runs his hands over her scorn scalp and she slots at him pitifully, scoffing much like a teenager would at an embarrassing parent. I'll do more than say hello. Bye, Yui. I got the achievement, met Raven. Aw, cute. And with that, she's gone, the door slamming loudly and, sh and shaking its frame. Finn groans, running an iron hand over his face as he walks to grab the whiskey Raven had poured him. She's interesting. She's your... He sips his drink. She's a pain in the ass is what she is. But I suppose she's my pain in the ass. She as old as you, dude. I sired her, so she's my responsibility. She jokes about me being her father, but... Uh, I suppose I am, in a way. I mean... I mean, you did get her mom pregnant, I guess, so you are the father. Unless it's like a vampire thing. Takes a small sip of whiskey, savoring the taste for a moment before he speaks. No, I prefer brother. Father just makes me sound so... old. <laughs> His laugh is charming. Yes, old. She tends to look after me much more than I look after her. She's a good kid. I'd be lost without her. I nod, observing him quietly as he sits down his glass. Sire bonds are powerful, and it's interesting to observe such a casual, healthy dynamic. Did you choose to turn her? He frowns, shaking his head. Well, no, not exactly. It's complicated, but I made a choice that I'll have to live with forever. Literally. I'd seen too many die at the hand of my sire. Something about her struck me. He planned to leave her for dead. But I couldn't let that happen. He smiles and is painfully earnest. We're kindred spirits, I guess. As much as I have regret for cursing her with immortality, she's the closest thing I have to a family. Now, what brings you to my neck of the underworld? He leans back against his desk. I need your help. I have a plan and I think I might need your help to execute it. He tilts his head, curiously, obviously piqued. A plan, hmm? I do love those. Tell me, what can I do? Don't you want to know the finer details first? He shrugs, running his tongue over his bottom lip. Makes no difference to me. I trust you implicity. If it means I can help you in any way, I'm all ears. Just tell me whatever you need me. Piper and I are going to attempt to break into the dungeons beneath HQ. His pointy ears flickered, almost flattening against his head before they put themselves to rights. He can't seem to mask his surprise, nor his apparent interest. The dungeons, hmm? He whistles, scuffing his boots against the stone floor. I can help you, but I may have a favor of my own to ask you if you're bold enough to venture down there. I narrow my eyes at him, contemplating if I want to tangle myself into yet another web. What is it? He pushes away from the desk, standing tall. An important member of my clan has gone missing, and I'm positive that they have him. As I'm sure you know, any trust for the enforcers is wavering. I want my friend back. He's done nothing to warrant being thrown in a dungeon. His hands falls into fist at his side, his prosthetic flaring brightly before it fades into its usual dormant dull glow. How do you know that they have him? I don't. They have an excellent defense system that prevents any of us from detecting him. No matter how close we manage to get, he would not just abandon us. He's either detained or dead, and if it's the latter, I just want to know. You're sure he wouldn't just leave? Your clan isn't like others. Maybe he wanted to change? He looks frustrated. He runs his fingers through his hair, leaving it messy. Fiero wouldn't just leave. I know he wouldn't. I trust him more than anyone else in my clan. Even Raven. We both suffered at the hands of Levi for centuries. We were healing from that together. He was the only friend I had when I was with Levi. And he saved me more than once. I owe him this. If he's ash and bone in a forest somewhere, then so be it. But if he's okay, then I must save him. 
The only family creatures like me have are the ones that you find, so I intend to keep them safe as long as I can. Uh, I'm gonna save here. Uh, ask about Levi. The suspicion on Finn's sire is sparse outside the fact that he, had, he was notorious and cruel, and I wonder how such a seemingly kind man could have followed him for that long. Call it morbid curiosity. Do you mind talking about him? About Levi? Finn grimaces, folding his arms across his broad chest. His posture loses its usual confidence. I suppose. I take a seat upon his bed, and he pulls out his desk chair. First thing I can think of to ask him is loaded, but I need to understand. Why did you stay with him for so long? He looks at me wide-eyed for a beep before he manages to formulate a response. I don't know if I can answer that. I still truly do not know. He was good at making sure you had nothing left to go home to. So he was all that I had. I'm not the kind of man who does well with loneliness. A wry smile crosses his lips, but Finn looks impossibly sad. What did he take from you? He falls thickly, casting his gaze to the side. Everything. He took my fiancé, killed him right in front of me before he took my own life. I was an orphan, and I didn't exactly have many friends. Ah, so you are also very fruity. I mean, no surprise considering you and Ezra. Gabriel was truly all I had. He destroyed our home, all of our memories, even took my name from me. He took it all, and he did everything to make sure that I needed him. I followed him like a lost puppy for centuries. Did you ever try to escape when you found others? He nods. Many times. I had a few periods of freedom, but he always found me. He tended to collect vampires with abilities like Fiero and myself. Maybe to make up for the fact that, aside from his advanced age, he was truly unremarkable. And now he's dead and you're free. You seem to be managing well for someone who endured all that. He sighs, rubbing the back of his neck with his iron hand. I'm trying to shape myself into the man I always wanted to be. Before the whole being undead thing. I try not to dwell on things that happened to me. I was bitter for long enough. I cannot change any of it. All I can do is be the opposite of what he wanted me to be. I smile as I observe him. I register how comfortable I feel in his home. The thought of stepping into the den of a clan before all of this would have set me on edge, but now? You're doing a great job, then. His mouth curls into an earnest grin. Thank you, Yui. I gave you permission to kick my arse if I dare step out of line. Duly noted. Alright, now I can ask about Fiero. Why do you think they've taken Fiero specifically, if you're so sure he's innocent? He shrugs, clearly quite confident in his theory. Because he's valuable. He's an empath. A powerful one. If he saw something he wasn't supposed to, or even if they just managed to overpower him and get him alone, I rarely let him, my clan members patrol by themselves, regardless of our supposedly stable relationship with the enforcers of this town. He sent someone in distress in the woods, so I allowed it. Therefore, if anything that has happened to him, it's my fault. Finn prides himself on being the opposite of his sire, and I can see that this is eating away at him. You can't place the blame on yourself, you didn't know. Plus, if he is as valuable as you say he is... His eyes light up when they meet mine, his fingers switching up upon the surface of the desk. Then they could be using him, so he's still alive. I smile in return, tilting my head this way and that. Well, ish. <laughs> he laughs and I can't help but join him. So you'll check for me? I nod. I will. So what is it that you'd like me to do exactly? Well, no one knows this town quite as well as you, and I was hoping you'd have some secret little passageway tucked away for me to use. There are wards and other nappy little tricks in place to stop people like you, like us, getting in. I'll worry about that. Now about the passageway? His grin is wicked, and I think I have my answer. He's in! I'm your guy. Say when, and I'll be there. Need anything else? Just come running. I bid Fed farewell, and now I only need to find one more friend. I saved the most somber until last. Alcar? Alcar. Alcar is waiting for me when I return to the wolf. It doesn't surprise me anymore when I catch his eye across the tavern where he's been nursing a mug of ale, clearly pouting. That the pout disappears when he sees me surely counts for something, though the way his lips thin instantly make me think perhaps not. 
He gets up, moving slow and deliberate, and I remain by the door for a moment, wondering if, hilariously, he's somehow trying not to scare me. Took you long enough. I was wondering if the bad shit got to you. Do you need something? Yes, actually. Aka rubs at the back of his neck and gives me a critical once-over. Frown deepening, then he glances behind his shoulder at the sparsely populated tavern. Three or four people lounging about seem deeply engaged with their own conversation, but I'm not an understanding. My room? <laughs> Alcar barks at a short, scornful laugh. So your superior can come knocking on the door and catch us? Not a chance. Gotta love, like, when the dog starts barking when, like, Alcar is, like, fucking laughing. That's a funny coincidence. Are you saying I'm trying to ambush you? He frowns at me, his tail flickering and then going still. His voice is low and steady when he answers. No, I'm not saying that, but I'm not keen on taking chances right now. Tell me you agree. Which is I loathe to abandon the promise of a horizontal, not a bare back rock surface to lie down on, close my eyes and try to process the day, he's right. And if Alcar has any more information, any more at all, I want to hear it. I need to hear it. Alright then, where? The woods. Deep dark words where I stumbled across a nasty youngling no more than a day ago. Alcar rolls his eyes. Would you prefer the graveyard where those damn Woodridge twins can probably hear every word we say? Not all of the woods are dangerous. I would know. I live there. Now, I ask that you trust me. Uh, of course. I incline my head in understanding and step aside, inviting him to take his leave through the door first. Alcar doesn't move immediately. He stays where he is, his arms crossed, and he regards me with a strange expression. It's not unreadable, but almost as though he doesn't know what expression he should be making. Something the matter? You're one trusting motherfucker, aren't you? I scowl at him. You and your friends in this lovely little town aren't giving me a lot of choices. I expect another eye roll, a scalp, a dismissive wit. Instead, Alcar inclines his head, and there's something almost like guilt in his grimace. Let's go. Lunaris is a cold and lonely shell of its daylight form tonight, and I have to almost run to keep up with how quickly, th though sure-footedly, Alcar moves through back alleys. The chill sinks into my bones, and unbidden, I wish I wasn't here. I wish I wasn't following a half-werewolf into the dark unknown towards more mystery. Omen's confession is still ringing in my ears, as do many other things. Did you know that Omen is? Alcar shakes his head. His wolf ears are flattening, not here. Another turn and we've stepped beyond the town's boundary. Trees loom above us, moonlight flooding through the bare branches to afford us some light. Ooh, pretty. Alcar leads me a little farther away into the roofs of houses that are barely invisible, then turns to me. A little while ago, I got into a fight with one of your hunters. He jerks his chin toward the town. Well, not one of yours exactly, I suppose. Since you just got here and all, but one of theirs. Some bloke. I don't even remember his face all that well. I was... Alcar pauses for a moment, rubbing at his chin almost nervously. His eyes narrow, but then he shakes himself of it and continues. I was... <laughs> it was during a full moon. I had... Uh, an argument with my sister. Didn't go well. Oh, did you turn? He grimaces at the memory. And when I transform... Especially if I'm upset. My control isn't as good as it could be. But I know I didn't kill him. Would have damn well remembered that. If you ripped a man apart with your own claws and teeth. But when I came to, he knocked me out, I guess. You hunters and your annoying little gadgets. Your enforcer friends were already swarming over us like hornets. But there was no blood. Not mine, not his. I was low-key, like, suspecting, like, Alcar, but I guess if he said he didn't do it. I mean, he could be lying, but still. That doesn't mean he didn't hurt him. Alcar gives me a look. Okay, smartass. The point is that he vanished. Poof. They, the enforcers, dragged me off to their fun little dungeon and kept me there for fuck knows how long. A week, I think. Maybe more. Okay, now I can see why I don't really like trust the enforcers. And then they just poked and prodded me a bit. Then they let me go. Felt like they wanted to do more. Like they had plans for me. But 
Maybe it was too dangerous to just snuff me, I guess. I know too many people. Ezra, Finn. But here's a question for you. What do you do when a creature hurts a hunter so bad he apparently isn't walking around anymore? You want to kill them? I pressed my lips together. Nothing pleasant. I know that much. Assuming the creature in question was allowed to escape with their life at all. But sometimes they are let go. Marks that are too delicately tied to the others of things to be freely snuffed, as Alcar had so elegantly put it. But surely if he wounded a hunter so terribly, he would still have been put in dungeons. Perhaps been there as a uh, parley for your release? But Alcar is shaking his head. They didn't. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you hunters don't get retirement leave till you can't walk on two legs anymore. And even then... Well, there are always prosthetics. <laughs> Alcar barks a sharp, bitter laugh and shakes his head, but neither he nor I find humor in it. I know. He's quiet for a moment, running a hand through his hair, messing with his clothes, fidgeting, nervous. I step back a pace to let him collect himself. No use pushing him for anything now, not when he's already so open with telling me everything he knows. I didn't kill that hunter. I didn't. I wouldn't forget something like that, and I... Enough to never do it by accident. Never. Alcar's frown is deep, but his words are as quietly fierce as they are pleading. I believe you. I believe you. The words are easy to say, and easier that they're true. I know, rationally and instinctually, that Alcar tells the truth. And I'll make them believe it too, if you like. Alcar stares at me in response. No clever words this time, just stares. Arms loose at his sides, surprise evident on his face. He stares like he's never seen me before. Is something wrong? Huh? No, I... He looks away, scratching at his head. Then he chuckles, sounding so disbelieving, it almost hurts to hear it, but at the same time, so relieved. And I have to wonder how many people didn't believe him. Not just about this, but about other things, too. He mentioned his sister briefly, that he had a fight with her on that night. He's never mentioned any family otherwise. Thanks. Alcar grins at me, and it's a lot less awkward than I figured it would be. You're welcome. I have another question. Were you aware that Omen comes from hell? Alcar frowns at me, then squints and snorts. Of course, where else would he be coming from? The general store? <laughs> no, he's from the fucking 99 cent store. <laughs> I'm sorry, Omen. I love you, baby. I love you so much. <laughs> I hope he doesn't hear the sound of my teeth gnashing as loud as I hear, but with the way his ears suddenly stand up and at the cackle, I know he's seen something. I mean, did you know that he's the son of the literal devil? You were the one who didn't ask. You weren't giving me a chance to, as I recall. Alcar crossing his arms and tossing his head, and his grin is a temptation to put a fist right in his face. You were gone a whole night with him, and you didn't ask? We were occupied doing- I stuttered to a halt. No. What we do is not for him to know. That isn't his business. We almost kissed. We would've fucked if it weren't for that fucking murder, if you wanted to know so bad. Too busy admiring the tongue. Hey, yo! I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Sir! Sir, can you blame me? And now you know you're probably admiring it too because I'm trying to do a polyamorous route with you and him. Are you going to taunt me? Are you asking for a fight? This will be the note this night ends on. <laughs> Alcar laughs and leans close to whisper wickedly. Don't worry, everyone has the same reaction. <laughs> Jenny chuckles and leans away, seem to find that the conversation is at an end. See you tomorrow? Where are you going off to so soon? Back into my hovel before the big handsome vampire comes to scold me about staying out in the cold. What else? I mean, if you need someone to warm you up. Just kidding, just kidding, I'm just kidding. Unless... And excuse my nosiness, but you look like you've seen some hell yourself, not just the Prince of Hell. I frown. Am I re obviously that rattled? But now that it's been said, I do feel the building headache behind my eyes. Not from the ghost of James alone, but from, well, everything. Alcar is staring at me again, tilting his head his way in that, and making a show out of squinting at me. Hmm, yeah, definitely look floored. Fit for bed. Well, don't stray too far. I might need you tomorrow. I have a plan. A plan, hmm? Well, don't worry too much. I'll be a stone's throw away, whether you like it or not. Gotcha. I'll meet you at the bar to day drink. Well, you need me? You need me. Until then, later. Disappears into the tree line. As sure-footed as ever, and once again, I'm left alone in this damn forest. 
Imagine if I just don't know how to get back home and he just leaves me here all by myself. I begin to make my way to the wall, my mind reeling again, as it always seems to be these days. Though I feel hopeful, my plan seemed plausible. The little team of misfits helpers I managed to assemble more than capable of carrying it out alongside me. I think. I smiled to myself, feeling a little lighter. Then, a rustle. Something moving in the tree line a little too close to the edge of town for my liking. Ah, oh, shit. I'm gonna save here just in case. Cause I don't trust this at all. Advance. I step forward, my footsteps quiet and assured as I advance towards the thicker forest. Another rustle, closer this time. And it lumbers into view. It's hunched over and misshapen with long, gangly limbs that look out of place on its relatively normal-sized body. A single twisted horn grows out of its head, and I spot three eyes. The third seems new and underdeveloped, and it melts crudely above the existing left socket. It's covered in patches of scraggly fur and scales, and in some places its skin is entirely burned off, an amalgamation of mismatched parts and pieces that look like they don't belong. That cloudy gaze meets mine, and merely looking at it gives me a headache. There's this weak demonic aura that makes my body beg me to look away. Then something hits me, something that makes me hesitant to draw my weapon. I cannot place this feeling of complacency, of ease, and nor can I fight it. Is this how my comrades were killed so easily? Does it have some kind of power to make us uh, freeze becoming immobile? Or is the dull ache of familiarity that settles in my gut that makes me pause? The feeling that I shouldn't harm it, that it deserves empathy, mercy? It opens its crooked jaw, melted sinew and molten skin stretching and splitting to reveal a set of violent jagged teeth. My body screams at me to fight, but my feet are firmly planted and stuck to the forest floor. My fingers don't move. My weapon is still frustratingly, frustratingly stapled to its holster. It takes a purposeful step towards me with a low, rattling groan, its teeth bared. My heart races as I stare into its unfocused eyes, all three of them blinking out of sequence. There's a loud ringing in my ears. I never felt like this before. My instincts are screaming, pulsing, dying for me to do something. Anything. Yet all I can apparently do is stare down my bitter end. Then, something washes over me, and in a split second, I gain perfect blinding clarity. Run. James. The creature takes another step and howls, a broken, blood-curdling screech. Run! I listen. Run, bitch! Run! Pick your route. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what happened to the polyamorous end? What happened to the polyamorous end? Where's my polyamorous end? What? Wait, hang on, what happens if I... Uh, 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 uh. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, go back. Uh, uh. It's still the same thing! It's still the same thing. Either way, I gotta choose someone. Oh no. That means I gotta romance someone already? But wait. What do I have to do to get the polyamorous in? Maybe I just go to uh, Omen, I guess? Or maybe there's something more I gotta do with Alcar? I don't know. Uh. Okay, I'm just gonna head back and like, go do the run thing. I'm gonna go to Omen. I got the achievement romanced Omen. Boy, am I supposed to do that? Or am I supposed to say no romance? Hang on, I'm gonna Google this shit. Okay, I got. I just gotta choose whoever it says. It says I gotta choose whoever. So I'm glad I'm just gonna be sticking with uh, Omen. As though my body already knows where I need to go, where I want to, my feet carry me towards Ezra's shop, towards where I hope Omen will be. I don't look back, but I do hear the rustle of trees and the creature's maddened aura fading. It's heading back into the woods. The town is safe. For now. I round the corner, my feet sliding into the icy cobblestones. As if the universe knew exactly what I need at this moment, I spot Omen lurking outside the shop. He's pacing beneath the dully lit mage light lantern. He spins when he hears my approaching footsteps, flames looking at his shoulders and framing his handsome face. Yui, what is it? I grab his arms and he steadies me while I catch my breath. I think I just saw the creature. He shakes his head, his brow furrowed, his tail curls around my wrist. Just breathe. I nod, heeding his advice and inhaling a shuddering breath. I've never felt like this before. I'm all too used to encountering all the nasty things that go bump in the night. Nothing usually phases me, not after years of this, but this was different. It did something to make me freeze, like I was paralyzed. Where is it now? Something flashes in his eyes, something powerful. My mind wanders the thoughts of what he might look like without that glamour, and I decided that this creature would be nothing compared to him. 
It retreated into the woods. I'm lucky to be alive. You can't get hurt. I wouldn't forgive myself. Oh, baby boy, I think he likes me too. Oh, I love him. He looks away, clearly trying to calm himself. I steal my gaze and stare him down. He's been through so much today. He revealed his truth to me, which without a doubt took guts. The fear he must have felt that he wouldn't be accepted. I found myself inexplicably drawn to him over and over, wanting to be near him, wanting to see him smile. Even after what I've seen tonight, all my fears melt away from that, and I'm in his arms. <gasps> oh, I get to kiss him! It's demon smooching time, boys! Let's go! It's demon smooching time! Demon smooching time! Can I kiss you? His warmth stinks right down on my bones, stifling the cold by the Lunarian air. I should be scared of him. His strength and standing is one that many cannot match, but... When he looks at me with those big brown eyes, I find it hard to see him as anything other than a man just like any other. With added tail and teeth, of course. Omen, would you mind if I kissed you? He takes a tiny step forward, looking down at our touching toes and back at me. I'd like it if you did. <gasps> oh, we're gonna smooch, boys! It's demon smooching time! I shift closer again, smiling as our noses brush. Then, I kiss him. Oh, there's something chaste and fleeting, but meaningful at the same time. His lips are as warm as the rest of him, soft and polite against my own. His cheeks are a delightful shade of scarlet when you break apart. His eyes wide and shining in the gentle darkness. Ayo, we kiss, let's go! Uh, thank you. I stare at him, still holding him firmly. The silk of his shirt is so soft beneath my fingertips. Did you just thank me for kissing you? He clears his throat, his tail is swishing back and forth, back and forth, then a quick sharp nod. Yes? I press my lips, wondering if I'll ever figure out the strange demon, then I think about how exciting it might be if I don't. Well, okay then. <laughs> he laughs and his tail returns to my wrist, closed tightly, squeezing once. Really though, thank you, you made me feel so at home. Go on the Ida. Is that your native tongue? I see the tip of his blackened tongue dart out briefly as he's misconstrued in my question, his eyes flashing red when he registers what I really meant. Yes, it is. I can teach you if you like. I mean, you can do something else with that tongue if you want. <laughs> Twitch, please don't ban me. I slowly drop my hands from my arms, lacing our fingers instead. I find myself getting used to his warmth. It's like standing too close to a fire when you've been freezing all day. Yes, I like that very much. I look at the low-hanging moon, smiling to myself, then I look at him. He's so handsome. Everything will work out, won't it? Yes, I believe it will. I believe in you. My job might sometimes mean that I must kill without hesitation. An omen is not is from the place where all evil is rooted, but he's not cruel like I presume his sire to be. Though I'm here to keep the people safe from harm, omen is the perfect example of a creature who would otherwise be feared and blindly hunted just because of his origins, something he didn't choose. Ah, racism. Instead, he chooses to be kind. I believe in you too. He smiles, his tail tied around my wrist. No longer are we alone, but we have a family. Everything is going to be okay. That's not it, right? Okay, good. That's not it. <laughs> 